in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, tonight we are desperate. Our hearts are open. We have come because we believe that you are able to change our lives. You are able to minister to us in the areas that matter even in this season. And so, Lord, we submit our wisdom and all the things that we have, we lay them before your feet and we receive your superior wisdom. In the name of Jesus, we receive the wisdom that is not of this world, nor of the princes of this world. We submit to your wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Apologize for the fluctuations in the sound and light. Sincerely apologize. Praise the Lord. We have a lot to do tonight and please, I want you to focus. Whenever the word of God is coming, that is not the time to be distracted. If you are distracted, it's an attack. Is a spirit. Praise the Lord. One thing is needful, whether you are in overflow one, two, or three, the moment the word of God is about to come, that is the time to not just write, is the time to listen, to receive. Praise the Lord. That is the time to receive. We thank God for what he's doing. And I truly believe that the teachings that the Lord is bringing is not just for koinonia, but these are teachings for the body of Christ, especially in this season. One of, one of my prayers as a person and is, is reflective of the desire of this ministry is to continually be at the cutting edge of what God is saying and what God is doing. I don't want to be found saying anything that God is not saying. That his emphasis should be my emphasis. His desire should be my desire. If God is going left, I shouldn't go right. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. We're reading the first three verses. Understanding is a miracle that you must desire. Please listen, my dear people. Understanding is a grace and a gift you must cry for. You can fast for understanding and it will be worth it. Are we together now? You can stay before God and say, Lord, my life is at the mercy of spiritual understanding. And that I desire the fullness of your understanding. Do you know, every time... 
I pray for this great house. Sincerely speaking, as I grow in knowledge, there are some prayers that I don't pray again. I don't pray, oh God, please give my people maybe houses or cars. Um, all these things are reactions. The real prayer request is understanding. There's no limit to your life if you truly gain spiritual understanding. You can gain scientific understanding. Ah! In the name of Jesus, I command this spirit to live now. I decree, my God, what is this that I'm seeing? Let them go now. Release them now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and I declare, overflow one, there is a miracle coming for someone. I cast that spirit now. Let them go now. Release them. This is the place of God's power. I challenge you, my God. I'm seeing dark clouds rising from people. Release them now. I bring to end every captivity. I'm seeing names written on the ground. Names written on the ground. This is a symbol of bondage. I release such people now. We are teaching, but let me minister for two, three minutes based on what I'm seeing. I cast those demons right now. Release God's people right now. Now, in the name of Jesus, I'm ministering to specific people. I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing something like shadow coming on people and making them feel dizzy. This is an attack. I command that spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let them go now, everywhere within this auditorium. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. This may not be to everyone, but that's why this place is called Koinonia. God is not only ministering to us, He's visiting people. Are we together? cannot hear you when they are oppressed I'm seeing chains on people's hands and I'm seeing the number 15 in the name of Jesus I declare upon these 15 people wherever you are by the fire of the Holy Ghost I break those chains now please help them just help those under the anointing I command those chains be broken now I command those chains hear the word of the Lord be broken now be broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated if you can. The Lord desires that we continue to be spiritual men. And one of the indices of true spirituality is discernment. The ability to tap into the impulses of the realm of the spirit. And to understand supernatural angelic activities. And also demonic activities. And then by the power of decree to set at liberty them that are bound. You will be surprised that this revelation God showed me may just be for one person for just two people but then it is worth it for that one person this is why he or she came for koinonia there's a lady in overflow three overflow three the Lord is showing me a lady in overflow three I'm seeing something that looks like a crown 
but that's not a crown of royalty it's a symbol of bondage I take it off right now by the power of the Holy Ghost I take it off right now by the power of the Holy Ghost we'll get to the word shortly this is koinonia so just just allow me to do the things that I'm doing please bring the person that shouts under the anointing outside overflow one I'm seeing fire and it's coming on someone right now and the Lord wants me to prophesy over that person is bringing restoration my dear to your family and light is touching someone from here to this place this row as I'm seeing the same thing God is doing on this lady God is doing to someone on that row in the name of Jesus Christ I prophesy restoration I don't care what the limits are we place the word of God upon your situation and I declare supernatural restoration supernatural restoration in the name of Jesus the Lord is driving away the spirit of death over three families hold on please three families I'm hearing in the spirit three families in the name of Jesus wherever they are you are representing that family I declare the spirit of death hell the grave we curse you by the power of the highest we we set at liberty right now these families we extend their lives in the name of jesus christ hallelujah we're going to be seated shortly you see listen as a minister of the gospel your assignment is not just to come and teach your assignment is also to be sensitive to the things that God wants to communicate are we together now God is bringing someone at overflow 2 to the realm of the prophetic overflow 2 by the roadside I'm seeing a grace there is an anointing that is bringing someone into that experience of the prophetic so that you will begin to hear and you will begin to see not like you are hearing not like you are seeing It's a realm of your glory, it's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Just one last prayer, and then we're seated. I'm seeing the grace for speed and restoration. That anointing is coming on at least 21 people. I stretch my hands now. Speed. That grace. That anointing. Lord, all those who must enter these dimensions in this season, I activate that grace. Speed. 
doesn't matter what you have lost doesn't matter what has left you i release that grace speed speed kabarakato sabaredashia hey baranda shalabarakato zabregetikata speed i prophesy i declare as one sent from the almighty speed to your life the families that you are representing i command speed how forcible are right words i declare the force of prophecy speed you will marvel at the things that begin to happen i declare by the god of jeshuron in the name of jesus christ Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please be seated if you can. Let's just take two minutes to just pray in the spirit while you are seated. The various ministrations of the spirit. That's why you came. The spirit of God is still blessing people. Just do what I ask you to do. Just sit while you are praying the Spirit. You are receiving something. Your year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I empower you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I empower you. I empower you. Shamarakatos kalabarikata. Negate preskata likatos asiana hasabrakatosia. It will be like a dream. You are being lifted by the hand of the Almighty. There is a force that is lifting you beyond the limitations of men. There is a force that is lifting your family. You came for koinonia. I speak it in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost. the lord is still telling me he's bringing speed i'm doing a quick walk a quick walk a quick walk that's what the holy ghost is telling me a quick walk this is the season of the quick walk i'm doing a quick walk by the power of the Holy Ghost, I release that grace upon this house. The grace that makes things happen fast. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it and we receive it. We declare a quick walk by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. It says, for he that cometh to God must believe. First, that he exists. You are not coming to meet an idol. Number two, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Listen, koinonia is not just a teaching ministry. It's not just where you come to learn. There is a spiritual impartation. You are immersed in a reality and you step out of it with an evidence that no power, no force, no devil can contest or deny 
is reality. These are not shadows. You will watch in wonder as you begin to see the testimonies that unfold just from the experiences. You see, God visits you through his word. He visits you through his power. Leave the realm of argument where you come and you are wondering, can God touch me? Can God bless me? No, it's a deposit of his grace. This place is a portal. It's an access point to the throne. God made it so by his grace. And that if you are humble enough to believe and receive, just one encounter is enough. You don't need to come twice. One and it's impossible to leave this place tonight and not return with a testimony. No, no. Listen, if this is your first time coming here, I'm telling you, it's impossible. You will never have to come twice to have a testimony. It doesn't matter. You are under a system that is bound by a covenant. This is not just something about a man's intention. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you have done tonight. We declare that forever Jesus will be lifted in this place. Lord, more than a man, may your people see Jesus. May they see Christ lifted and glorified. Tonight, change our lives by the power of your word. In the name of Jesus. Please just sit down, everyone. I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. This is not for everybody. There are specific people that this prophetic word is joy, 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 joy. I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. Mighty God, we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Just help those under the anointing. And um, let us get to the word. These are the various ways and systems in the kingdom by which God lifts men. More than the communications of men. This is a spirit communication. That God invades your spirit man and deposits something upon you. You see, God, just within these few minutes, has distributed so many things so many things activating gifts dimensions bringing people into realms and levels most times you may not understand what you have received until you step out of this place and then you will see possibilities activated and you will know that this one was by the finger of god hallelujah Second Peter chapter 1, let's get to the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is bringing restoration to someone among the ushers. I just saw this now in a flash. One of the ushers. The Lord is bringing restoration. Restoration by the Spirit. And God is saying it will no longer be like before. It will no longer be like before. It will no longer be like before. 
in the name of Jesus Christ the name of Jesus Christ second Peter chapter 1 I don't know who this is for but the Lord is saying I should tell you my word still stands my word still stands what I told you must come to pass the way I said it the Lord is saying I should tell somebody my word still stands no matter what you have seen this is a prophetic word for someone and I speak by the Spirit God is saying I should tell you my word still stands my word my word still stands no matter what you have seen my word still stands i've spoken once i will not speak again my word still stands my word still stands forever O lord your word is settled forever O lord your word is settled please sit down i want you to be very sensitive to what god is doing this is not just people shouting carelessly or falling under the anointing no this is god birthing definite things in the lives of people birthing very definite things things you can see things you can relate with you will know and you can know that this one was by the hand of god second peter chapter one we start from verse two we're reading the first three verses after from verse two just help those under the anointing grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ the next verse says according as his divine power hath given us all things ah, fire is burning in this house I tell you fire is burning in this house 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 all that i'm seeing in the spirit is fire just fire fire don't mind my madness just allow me to do this thing i'm just seeing fire that's what i'm seeing fire you know when these things start no matter how you try to concentrate sometimes you just continue to see um, there's a young man here you are in ministry the Lord is telling me that you are entering the realm of the miraculous right now the dimension of strange miracles God has been dealing with you for months you have been having encounters it's even part of the reasons why you came here and God is saying you are stepping into a strange dimension of miracles. Kabaruzi Kataria. Wherever they are in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let the grace and the unction that brings men into dimensions of the miraculous. You will know you have come to receive something solid. You will go back to your ministry. And in the name of Jesus, you will see the hand of God in unusual ways. Let the sick be healed under your hand. Let lives, let testimonies, let testimonies, testimonies, testimonies. Jakata barakata. It's like a well of fire from within your spirit. 
opening up a well of fire from within your spirit i shift you to a level of miracles a level of signs and wonders hallelujah you know sometimes god just interrupts the service to minister to his people and it's important to be sensitive because sometimes this five ten minutes of ministration i know that next week is a miracle service but sometimes you always will not have to wait for the miracle service there are people whose situations are a matter of life and death so it's, it's God bringing people into that realm. It's, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit, entirely by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So he introduces levels, realities into your life. These are the dimensions that no man can gainsay nor resist. Please sit down. Let's see if we can make progress. We have a lot to do. Our retreat starts tomorrow and Sunday. Maybe this will be the last one and then we'll trust God for grace. This lady, Kende, the Lord is bringing I'm seeing a fire that is coming upon her and the Lord is saying he's burning everything that has been deposited into her body this is sickness sickness but in the name of Jesus I command that spirit to give way right now anyone sick here if there is anything sickness I sense a healing anointing right now sickness be healed be healed now be healed please help them be healed anything that has entered your body every deposit to manifest as sickness be healed i bring you the life and the power of jesus be healed it goes once and for all uncontrolled flow of blood goes now uncontrolled flow of blood it goes now once and for all it leaves your life forever in the name of jesus christ the Lord is healing a breast lump. I decree and declare that lump dies now. That lump dies now. That lump dies now. That lump dies now. The Lord is breaking a circle of joblessness in a family. All of you in that family, there's not one person that has a job. But I'm seeing like a sword coming right now. And in the name of Jesus, I don't know where that family is. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, your season for testimony, your season for testimony, I break that circle right now. In the name of Jesus, for he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. I release that family. Enter your realm of testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Let's continue. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 now. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue verse 4 it says whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises what did he give us exceeding great and precious promises so how did he make us partake us through the promises he left promises that when we access and walk in that reality we will be partakers of that divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through loss bless your word tonight 
and in the name of Jesus we pray that you will increase us amen and amen last week I started teaching on the warfare dimension of kingdom wealth I'll be teaching along that lines not exactly the same thing but then I want us to listen very carefully because for many people the subject of the blessings of God divine supplies wealth and prosperity has always been seen as the activity of carnal people those who do not love God and those who don't want to grow spiritually but that is not true I took out time to explain to you that the fight for resources is the fight for the souls of men remember my teaching yes and that there will always be a demand by satan to give your soul in exchange for material things so it's not just that your soul listen carefully it's not just that your soul is given to the devil but that your spiritual growth and your spiritual health is mortgaged for the purpose of material supplies and i gave you a litmus test that you can know you have fraternized with this system when your wealth grows as your spirit dies satan will never allow both your soul and your pocket to rise together when your pocket begins to rise he will come and negotiate that your spirit goes down are we together and that has been the system so people give up the activities that make for the health of their soul to look for money but in the name of jesus there is a generation of men and women rising by the spirit of god who will prosper even as their souls prosper Amen. and so i told you there is a warfare dimension that the king of tyre satan himself sits upon that mountain that represents the economy of the earth and we're going to look at the second aspect today and I'm just going to talk to you two words basically that we'll be teaching um, along those lines and then God will grant us grace Genesis chapter 1 please Genesis chapter 1 when God made man he gave a command and the first word that man heard from God according to verse 28 and God blessed them and said unto them be fruitful everybody say it after me be fruitful number two multiply number three replenish the earth number four subdue it that these four dimensions is what makes for dominion that for the saints to at any point command dominion all of these dimensions must be captured in their experiences you must have the ability to be fruitful you must have the ability to multiply you must have the ability to replenish and then to subdue i'm not talking about all of those dimensions i just want to connect something i did a teaching before we went on a short break on be fruitful please you need to get it it's very very important because i want to start building from there god is a god of increase god is a god that desires the saints to increase and to be fruitful and um when the Lord mandated man to be fruitful. Please leave the scripture there. Many theologians have taught that what God meant by be fruitful is just biological fruitfulness, like have children and replenish the earth. I, I believe there is a dimension of that. But as I began to study this, the Lord opened my eyes to certain dimensions. And that's where I want to start with tonight. That there are at least five levels or five areas where God desires the saints to be fruitful. Write it down, please. Number one, the womb, or what you call fruitfulness, children, the womb. 
when God told man be fruitful he meant to be able to carry seed up until delivery and by so doing multiply the earth number two the mind be fruitful means that your mind must also be fruitful number three your hands be fruitful your hands must also be fruitful number four be fruitful your mouth your lips must also be fruitful just follow me carefully and then lastly your spirit so when god spoke to man and said be fruitful he was not just speaking to the womb of the woman he was speaking to all of these dimensions of man that the womb be fruitful the mind be fruitful the hands be fruitful the mouth be fruitful the spirit be fruitful are we together the fruit of the womb is the child the fruit of the mind is ideas and creativity please write when the womb gives birth you call the child or you call the fruit a child when the mind or your thoughts give birth you call the fruit ideas when the hands give birth you call the child work or accomplishments when the mouth gives birth you call it words when the spirit gives birth you call it character and so all these dimensions must be captured in the experience of the believer if you are to walk in fruitfulness and if you are to challenge the powers that be we have dealt with the fact that there are spirits that sit upon this mountain and we agreed that one of the ways that we challenge these spirits is by our allegiance to the system of the kingdom are we together we rounded up in the last meeting with the daniel where daniel and the three hebrew boys came and said oh king we will not bow we know that the way of safety and security is to bow to this idol but we have made up our minds that our god is able to deliver us are we together and so it is possible that we conquer these spirit influences by refusing to bow to these operations but it does not automatically translate into the blessings of the saints and i want to just guide you very briefly tonight i'm talking very briefly on the power of productivity the power of productivity this is a very scarce teaching in the body of christ and even in africa the power of productivity submitting to the government of christ in the face of these controlling powers is not enough to deliver the inheritance of christ to the saints there is a weapon of mass destruction given to the saints wherewith we can paralyze the systems of darkness and possess what our possession is the name of that weapon is productivity say productivity please write this down there is a difference between value and productivity there is a very huge difference between being valuable or value and productivity value talks of your inherent abilities value talks of your potentials value talks of your transactable skills that means that 
everything you piece together that can become an advantage in your life is called value but productivity is more than value are we together now just because you are valuable does not guarantee that you will be rewarded the world is full of many valuable people but in the face of economic hardship even their value is not able to deliver to them the kind and the extent of supplies that they need are we together now it is important to be aware of value but just camping at that realm of value is not enough to empower the saints please write this down productivity is the quality or the ability to create make or enhance products and services that are needed and useful i'll take it again productivity is the quality or ability to create make or enhance products and services that are needed and useful never forget this this definition that productivity is the quality to be able to create and make products and services that are needed and useful look up please everyone while value talks of your inherent abilities productivity refers to a system where you turn those abilities into products and services that are needed and useful it is not valuable people who are rewarded it is productive people are we together please you may write this down financial resources will always follow productivity not necessarily value financial resources will always move the direction of productivity Productivity also refers to the ability to make anything in abundance. The ability to provide the abundant supply of anything is productivity. Hmm. So God has a system for our prosperity. He's a God of increase. In spite of the fact that there are giants on these mountains, Satan himself sitting at the helm of the economic affairs to manipulate the saints into lack, into poverty, and by so doing, distract them so that they do not have the time to prosper and serve the purposes of the kingdom. And I'm teaching you that one of the weapons to bring victory economic victory is productivity any man any woman any church any organization that is not productive will be poor it's a law please listen carefully any man any woman any church any business any organization that fails to be productive there is no system to authorize reward for a non-productive personality before i discuss a few things and a few ways that god can help us to be productive let me destroy what i call the consumer mentality Please listen to me, Africa. One of the greatest unbecoming of this continent is what we call a consumer mentality. Say consumer mentality. It is sin for God to give you a thing and then it shrinks and dies and you cannot transfer the abundance of that to a generation. It is sin. Everything God gives men 
he expects that they increase in the parable of the talent matthew chapter 25 the bible talks about three men who were given talents one five talent listen carefully the other two talents and then the last a talent and the bible says the one with the five went and made five more increased the other one with two went and made two more but the one with one talent returned back and said you are a hard man you reap where you didn't sow and jesus called him a name he didn't call him lazy man he said you are a wicked and unprofitable that's the word unprofitable there is no gain trusting you wicked and unprofitable servant africa has been plagued and sadly respectfully so but sadly our educational system has also contributed in building the consumer mentality are we together now so the the whole idea of productivity is foreign to an average african and worst of it all to an average believer the subject of productivity is not taught believers we we have been trained to ignore productivity let me tell you i think the worst scam is to expect life to give to you something the bible says give and it will be given to you that's the law it didn't say what you give is what must be given but until you give nothing should be given back to you so if you do not give and you expect that something should be given back to you it's amazing my brothers and my sisters how many of us many of us even seated here just believe that life will have a way and find a way of coming to bring resources to you to meet your needs just because God is alive does not mean your needs are met guaranteed are you getting what I'm saying now productivity so the average person thinks consumption give me let me eat it has finished Give me another one. Let me eat. It has finished. Daddy, give me this. It has finished. Productivity. We lack this grossly in Africa. Are we together now? Yeah. So people collect their salaries. And when they collect their salaries, the moment there is a short supply of that salary for two or three months, they are back because there was no productivity. There was money, but no productivity. Are we together now? Yes. Productivity is a system of increase. In mathematics, we have addition, we have subtraction, we have multiplication. And another name for multiplication, they say find the product of this. And you know that they are talking about multiplication. It's a system of increase. Woe betides any soul that does not understand the law of productivity. The days that are here now, not the days that are coming, will create a level of frustration upon that individual and all connected to that individual. We must understand productivity. God wanted the entire globe saved and he used one son. Productivity. Now he has gotten many sons in glory. The consumer mentality is the mentality that always believes in finishing what you have. Always believes in finishing what you have. It doesn't have to be finance, anything at all. The consumer mentality is the mentality that will always run dry. Always run dry. A mentality that never thinks increase, never thinks addition, never thinks multiplication. When you have a consumer mentality, when you come into the life of a man, you run that man dry. I don't mean a male figure, anybody at all. Are we together now? There are members with consumer mentality. They come to church and run the church dry. It doesn't have to be financially. Anything that comes from your life that does not add or increase is a consumer mentality great people are concerned with addition that because of your presence you become a multiplier factor are we together so your whole family is going down and here you show up and because of you something happens in that family and begins to multiply 
the greatest way to understand productivity is agriculture amazing how you can take a seed look up everybody you plant that seed are we together now and then you watch it that orange seed just give it a little time it grows the orange seed is not productive until it can hold orange enough are you seeing that now yes in spite of the wind that will blow some other seeds it has the stamina and a few months after maturity you begin to see oranges everywhere watch this you will pluck the oranges and after a while it will start again and you will pluck some more and there are orange trees and other fruit trees that are older than people the trees were there before they were born yet they will still eat of it that's productivity are we together now no man who is productive becomes poor no matter what babylon wants to do or not no matter what devil no matter what charm what cause productivity is not an idea for success it's a weapon productivity is a weapon a man of god who is productive will never have empty pews a church a ministry that is productive will never go down a business that is productive will never see shame the key is productivity the key is not wishing the key is not sentiments the key is productivity the ability to convert anything small to become big productivity the ability to introduce a multiplier factor i am productive who do i use come I am productive to the degree to which I can multiply this gentleman's value, his usefulness. That he comes as a naive young gentleman and I have access to his life. And in six months, in one year, I transform this person by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is productivity. Are we together now? Let me say this respectfully. Any pastor that does not cause the members to increase and to be productive in the days that will come will be ready for empty pews the days of solidarity based on tribe based on all this are over the determining factor for impact is productivity we come from the same village will soon be a joke we have the same auntie you are my elder brother i'm your younger brother no people are desperate he said that in the last days the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains and over the hills and the people will say let us flow although upwards but let us flow to that mountain are we together thank you what does productivity involve let's discuss this quickly number one the first key to productivity is healthy exposure write it down the first key to productivity is exposure please whether you are standing outside whether what if you can listen listen if you can write write what's the first key it's impossible to be productive until your mindset is stimulated by a new horizon to life to god whatever it is i was blessed by the testimony of that gentleman one testimony you were all laughing around when the guy was doing his best to articulate and piece together every spiritual intelligence you you, you can see the don't feel bad my friend but you can see the scarceness of his revelation and access you can see that he's just throwing anything spiritual but he said i want to start from that kindergarten Give that gentleman two, three months under the correct atmosphere and you will watch a young man rise that will surprise you. You will forget that he was once the person who just came and spoke here. Productivity. Productivity. Anything that enters your hand multiplies. Anything that comes around your life increases. Are we together now? Everybody say exposure. 
listen to me exposure is not a gift of the spirit in fact exposure is not even a gift of life at all exposure is a system where your horizon is expanded listen carefully you will never rise beyond your mindset i hope you know that zaria hear me hear me hear me this is one of the secrets of our limitation we are limited we are not bad we are just limited that all your life you have known life to be a particular way and so you do not know there is more to life are you getting what i'm saying now most people their exposure is negative party and all of that that's not that's why i said healthy exposure that means there's an unhealthy one listen to me if god wants to lift you and cause you to be productive the first miracle that happens to your life is he can either shift you geographically or give you access to an environment that begins to expand your understanding he will introduce a person he will introduce a system or he will translocate you to a region where your mind begins to be adjusted listen to me that's why sometimes you receive miracles you know you didn't pray for god is breaking that cycle of limitation there is no basis for receiving when you can there are many people who cannot god cannot even tell them certain things it's not yet a concept that can be received they don't have a system built within them to receive it please listen very carefully exposure I believe is one of the reasons why the knot is very backward. I believe is one of the reasons why the middle belt is the worst part of it. Because our entire family, supported by a lopsided communication of Christianity, has stabilized our mediocrity and kept us within a plane that doesn't even make allowance for growth. Listen to what I'm telling you. The average middle beltan the average northerner has an extra project to do in trusting God to break that circle first because it is so bad that the slightest show of exposure can even be attacked as extravagance. This is how bad this spirit is. Exposure, exposure, exposure. The ability to expose you. When God finds out that there is nothing around you that can relate to it he would translate you to the realm of the spirit and say still see in any case i need you to comprehend that's what he did to abraham he kept telling abraham you will be a father of many nations abraham said amen like we're saying and god said i can't work with you you are you are empowering delay in your life and then one time he said abraham come out you have checked around and there is nothing that looks like lift up your eyes see count the stars he had been looking at the stars but he never tried counting them i'm looking for something i can use to 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 parallel what i want to do in your life so count the stars so he will start one two three, oh god one two three four five ah one god is impossible that's it he says so shall your seed be i i have i've planted something in you that you can now relate with he says and abraham finally believed god and it was credited to him for righteousness many times we do not have a basis for being blessed because we are limited we came from a poor background now i'm not insulting you please you are born to look like your parents but you die looking like your decisions listen carefully i understand that you came from a background that may not allow you to rise but somewhere along your life, you must make up your mind. Unfortunately, many of us make up our minds in an unhealthy way. You just sit down and say, this poverty, I'm tired. I must start hustling. You have missed it again. Hmm. Exposure. So, the young carpenter from Galilee. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And every time he went to pray, his horizons were expanding. You see what Satan did to Jesus? He took him to an exceeding high mountain and said, you have not seen this one, at least not in the flesh. He says, look at it first. Let me expand your mind. Good marketer. When he saw everything, he said, let me make this work easy. 
it was only a temptation because of what Jesus saw if Jesus did not see anything it can be a temptation are you getting what I'm teaching you tonight everybody say exposure it is the reason why there is a lot of advancement and there is ease of establishment in areas like say Abuja or Lagos and all of that do you know why because the environment sociologically speaking and infrastructurally speaking is developed enough to subconsciously stimulate creativity so you are passing and there's a mall that challenges you and then they tell you this is a young man that owns it and subconsciously your mind continues to bank in challenges until you don't know when you sit down and say lord there has to be something about my life but in this environment no matter what level you are you are still a champion you see how bad it is before or after school you are still better than many people before or after being born again you are better than many people you waste your money they say no problem you are better than us there is nothing that challenges you so you need a healthy exposure there are people in their life who never bought cars and the day you say we are trusting God for a car they look at you and say what what kind of nonsense is this must you live with a car no you mustn't but it's better to have a car are we together now yes Listen, one of the ways that Satan destroys men is to allow your mediocrity to reach the apex. Then he will now in, he will expose you by himself. That's why you can have a naive lady who never understood anything about life and a young guy can just come and carry her and say, my dear, let me tell you what this is. Let's go to a very big hotel or somewhere and she gets to eat a nice one and say, what is this? This is called this. This is called that. She doesn't know she's getting angry until she leaves that hotel and returns back home. And the mother says, sir, it's ready. Help me pour water on the firewood. Let, let's just conserve it. And suddenly there is an agitation. But because it was wrongly done, she will make up her mind that that experience I will not rest. She will find a way of going back. Nobody sees something better and rests. When new wine comes, something begins to happen. The old wine becomes tasteless. It's how God expands us. Many of us have never seen the advantage of living a blessed life. You have never really seen a blessed godly person around you. Please look up, look up, look up, look up. Don't, don't feel insulted, but many of us have not had models of correct, blessed believers. You have seen struggling believers. You have seen believers here and there who are a bit, they have today, tomorrow they don't have. You have not seen a portrait. So when the Bible says, blessed is the man that fears the Lord, there's nothing you can, you just, you just think it says, godly is the man. You know how your phone doesn't have some characters and when you send text messages, it will use something else to replace it. My brothers and my sisters, the mind only begins to conceive when there is a reference. There has to be something. That's the reason why men and women of God must challenge themselves, even on this wise, to become worthy references. A ministry that has a prophet will easily have prophets as members because they can see a man prophesy a ministry that has a millionaire will usually have people the possibility that you see before you is what you become that's what jacob did to the animals he simulated what he wanted them to become are you getting what i'm saying now Many of you have not seen the excellency of a blessed life. The only thing you have heard about a blessed man, rich men are crooks, rich men are stupid, rich men are obsessed with money. They are the ones who destroy our country. Rich men are corrupt people. And when you hear that kind of thing, your mind has pegged that as the definition of wealth. So God exposes you to a man who is blessed and loves God. 
and you are seeing a reality that is foreign to your experience i thought all wealthy people hate god i thought all wealthy people are indisciplined crooks here i'm seeing a man that loves god then you have the opportunity to see his offering you have the opportunity to see his tithe you have the opportunity to see his prayer and in it his righteousness endures he will leave you with a mark you will go back and say mama i know we are in this hut but there is a better life egypt i know there's cucumber and there's carrots but there is canaan mama there is canaan let's trust god for grace and in the name of jesus i'm speaking to you may you be the one to lift your family out of this land. please sit down exposure exposure creates dissatisfaction in your heart are we together you never knew that it was possible to pay a child's school fees beforehand because every time they paid your school fees you were the last you never knew that it is possible for somebody to not worry about money it's not a reality that your mind can ever try to conceive that there is such a realm where you sit down and the only thing that governs your appetite is the will of god not luck Do you know and do you believe there is such a realm? Please listen to me. Such a realm where you are empowered to be a blessing. You get to a church and you see them struggling. Rain is hitting everyone. And you can just sign a check and say, please get canopies for these people. Let the name of the Lord continually be exalted. Let this not be what would discourage them. Your resources increasing even as your soul prospers. You cannot be productive until you see the advantage. There must be a system of recognition. You must see what it can do to you. Are we together? I never had the privilege to be around extremely wealthy people, just like most of us. Here and there, we had average people. Some of us came from families that were average here and there. But extreme levels of wealth. Notice that this is one of the reasons why many of us our educational background is very poor till today we are still fighting that warfare let me tell you where it started from it started because of the kinds of nursery and primary schools we went to you went to a school that you sat on stone now i'm not insulting you are we together yes a school where they teach in another language and they translate to you in whatever language you can know because that's what is obtainable are we together how you pass your JSC is now that you know it was mercy and favor because you were certainly not ready now let me tell you if you come from that kind of background you will be surprised the first thing you have to manage is complex not assimilation the moment you find yourself in the company of other people their confidence will intimidate you you will have to fail for a long time before you start building your own assignment at that point is not even to understand what they are teaching to manage your complex just a question they ask you stand up and you cannot say your name again you don't fail because you are bad you fail because there is a backlog of something you are dealing with exposure is powerful exposure is powerful the same way you grew spiritually because you were exposed to people who God had helped. Are you seeing that? When this ministry started by the grace of God, there were so many spiritual people. Someone would get born again in two weeks. Two weeks. When everybody is fasting, you won't have the grace to complain. When everybody is praying, you won't have the grace to be lazy. When there are programs and everybody is praying through the night, you will easily follow suit. Is that true? We are products of our environment. So God needs to grant us access to exposure. Now listen, I want to say something and please let it not hurt you. If for any reason you come from a polygamous family or any kind of family for that matter that did not model correct fatherhood, correct motherhood, correct brotherly love, you have an extra project to do on yourself to trust God for grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me tell you this. 
Now, I love my father. I love him with all my heart and thank God for what he has become now. I say this respectfully. He's still alive, so I'm saying it very cautiously. But I love him, but I do not model his system of fatherhood, especially in his youth. That's because his own father died when he was 10 years. So he spent his entire life hustling. He grew up a bit with his uncle who was a soldier. He was a what? A military man. So what do you think? His whole template was warfare and aggression. That was what he termed progress. And now we happen to be the ones in the scene and it was terrible, especially being the first son. It was, it was a tug of war. It was almost like fight to fight between myself and my father. Everything was aggression. You bring cold water for him to wash his hand. He won't say you are wrong. He will slap you. You fall with the whole thing. Then you go to the kitchen and ask somebody they slapped before. How did you manage that situation? Now please, don't you ever see my father. And my father is a born again loving man right now. He's a healthy and wonderful man. Are we together now? Yes, I respect and I honor him with my life and forever. So don't, don't think that honor your father. I'm not just, he's, a, he's truly a good man. One of the most honest people I've seen in my life. But he was a victim. I have learned by experience that the concept of being bad does not really exist. Everybody is only an executor of his understanding. Because there is no bad dead body and there's no good dead body. There's only a dead body. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yeah. And so that life of aggression, exposure. I didn't want it, but that was all I had seen. And so subconsciously as I started growing, I found out that my approach to life began to reflect that. You don't receive willingly alone. Once you are exposed to a system for a long time, it becomes all you know. That's why most people that complain about leaders, when they get there, they do the same thing. Because while they were complaining, they were becoming it too. Remember Animal Farm? Literature students. That's exactly what happens to people. And so my life started reflecting that. I was unusually aggressive. I said, no, 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 no. Something has to happen to my life. Lord, this cannot be my life. Ah. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. It's amazing to what degree we reflect the things that modeled our minds. Whether you like it or not, it's a different thing. Respectfully speaking, if your mother was a cook and you saw her stealing daddy's money and called it smartness, you will be surprised what you do when you enter a relationship. You can finish praying in tongues right now and while you are praying, you just see 1,000 protruding from a trouser and you would drag it and drag it in the name of the Lord. You are a victim. Everybody say exposure. Zaria people, listen to me. The internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitations of our territory. I repeat, the internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitation that comes with our territory. There are things we may never have seen and known, but for the power of the internet. The internet is like a gun. You can use it to destroy yourself or you can use it to build. Many of us, it is the power of the internet that gave us access to messages, to people, to dimensions. Are we together now? Just like some of us, it's the internet that destroyed us and planted wrong seeds in our minds. You can remedy for your lack of exposure. If it is costly to fly physically, let your mind go there. Listen carefully. The most important ingredient in your exposure is not your body, it's your mind. So when your body cannot get there, don't feel bad. Find a way of taking your mind to that location. 
and this is where the internet becomes a blessing you don't have the privilege to attend a pastor's conference somewhere to bless your your yourself but your mind can go there remember i've taught you that when your mind gets somewhere your body must follow it doesn't matter what the resistance is yes you don't have the privilege to have been born in lagos you don't have the privilege to have been born in the u.s you don't have the privilege to have been born in any of the western worlds apostle i don't even know the name of my village the last time i checked i didn't exactly see it there that's not the issue your body may not be able to go there but god has orchestrated such that your mind can go there everybody around you was a bad father a wicked man a bad mother a wicked woman and god can just lead you to one 15 minute video on youtube that translates you into the home of somebody who can re-mentor you and start correcting your wrong ideologies everybody say exposure there's no excuse in our world today for remaining small even financially there is a system of exposure there is a system of exposure there is a system of exposure are we together Number two, thank you. The second key to productivity, please write it down, is creativity and innovation. Creativity and innovation. The second key to productivity. Remember I told you productivity is a weapon. You don't just fight by prayer alone. You don't just fight by fasting alone. Your productivity is a weapon as god is exposing you and exposing your mind you are fighting a warfare that you do not know it's a warfare for your destiny while you are exposing yourself you are exposing it for your children for your children's children and then number two creativity write this down what is creativity creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas imaginations and dreams into reality creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas your imaginations and your dreams into reality hmm. i saw this definition and it was so instructive it also involves the act of turning your um, transforming your ideas imagination dreams into reality full stop it also involves perceiving the world in new ways, comma, finding hidden patterns and making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. It involves perceiving the world in new ways, finding hidden patterns, making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. Look up, please. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the Bible was not as a revealer, but as a creator. There was darkness. Genesis chapter 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2 says, now the earth was dark and void and formless. Is the Hebrew word tohu abohu. Confusion and chaos. And the Bible says, the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters because creation recreation was about to start the first manifestation of the holy spirit was as a creative spirit and listen to me if you will conquer the king of tyre and if you will go up the mountain to bring wood and build the house of god then you must be creative the spirit of invention the grace that can bet realities from the realm of the spirit please hear me any man that is not creative in this generation will die of hunger or be at the mercy of those who are creators. There is no reason for competition again. Creation is the key. The ability to translate possibilities from the realm of the spirit. Please give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. The Bible says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or imagine the word there is imagine it says according to the power that worketh in us 
creativity. Unfortunately, our generation of young people have been stimulated into mental sleep. Our creativity level in this generation is almost zero. Thank God for the curriculum they used to bring those days in primary school. Quantitative reasoning. And uh, what's the other one? Verbal reasoning. This, our lazy generation now doesn't even understand anything that stimulates the mind. I, I'm not being insultive, but you ask a graduate a simple question. Just something he can think about. I mean, it's not there at all. Creativity is zero. Zero. So we like doing things the way everybody has done. You just carry somebody's project and change your name and adjust figures. Change five to seven. Change this to and change address and stamp it straight to community market and present it. Creativity is zero. Many businesses. That's why when a business is wrong, many other businesses become wrong too because they don't think. They just copy. You must trust God for the grace. Listen to me. There is a level of creativity that can come upon you and bail your family forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. There is a spirit in man. Man is not an empty body. There is a spirit. And the inspiration, that's the word. From the word inspire. The word inspire does not just mean to prime. It means to magnetize, like you bring a magnet close to something and you cause another metal to shift because of a magnet. That's the idea of inspiration. That the Holy Spirit, the author of wisdom can come close to you. And in physics, we call it resonance. Let, let's, let's talk a little physics more. Resonance. Are we together now? Yes. That when you use a tuning fork and you hit at a frequency, Every other object within that frequency begins to resonate. That's how it is. So the spirit of God comes and he does something to your spirit man and lifts you. He wants you to bet something. So he comes in that dimension and deep calls on to deep. You are seated in the room. There has to be a way. Lord, my family cannot just... I, I, listen, listen. I don't mean to be a prophet of doom. But let me tell you this. Robots are here to stay. That means jobs are already... Jobs are becoming like typewriter. Did you hear what I said? Jobs are becoming like what? Typewriter. Let's speak economics a little. Hear me. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God. I'm speaking in the spirit of Noah. Telling you a flood is coming. Join this ark and join it fast. They laughed at Noah for 120 years. He kept telling them a flood is coming. There are more graduates in Nigeria than any level of development between now and the next 50 years can ever employ. Are we together? Masters is the new degree right now. You don't move around that you have a degree. Masters is the new... You go, they apply to a job looking for 80 people. And about 12,000 people will write it. There are people who have finished since 15 years ago. They will eat first before it gets to your turn. So if you're a fresh graduate now, imagine that until 15 or 14 years, Babylon manipulating the system to make sure the saints cry. But there is a way. There is a spirit in man. Listen to me carefully. The the employment in any nation is private sector driven there is no nation that the government handles their employment no government has only limited parastatal are you getting what i'm saying now and because they are working on cutting costs usually they will make sure that as much as possible they cut cost the employment rate in any nation is private sector driven that means the more businesses you have the more entrepreneurs you have then they can be able to absorb people unfortunately technology and information has replaced men there is no reason why i should employ 1000 people when i can employ five people and five computers 
737 of GT Bank alone made sure it blessed people one of their most successful products but with that many people may never get a job again because it was very efficient every businessman does business for profits i hope you know bank is business bank is not government property is somebody's business look at graduates now all around there is nothing because there is a system and please listen to what i'm saying because when a father does not have something that brings resources and mother does not have something that brings resources they will both suffer and the children will suffer listen for the sake of your children my brothers and my sisters don't listen just for yourself let us rid ourselves of this selfishness it doesn't matter it doesn't take very long before your child comes and then the reality will dawn on you and while that is happening satan is manipulating the economy to make sure the prices of things go high it's a double-edged sword so that whatever direction you come from you will be attacked listen the average salary within this system is not more than 20 to 30 thousand listen carefully am i telling the truth there are only few places that can employ people in Zaria. Let me use Zaria. I'm talking to the whole world, but please permit my bias. Let me just address my people a little bit. The average salary is 20 to 30,000. Anything more than that is uh, until you have any federal government thing. And we know no matter how careful you are in this life, 20 to 30,000 will not do you anything no matter how stingy and greedy and even wicked 20,000 will not be enough even if you are a thief you will need more than that to steal calculate the amount to buy weapons dress and it's more than that already so no matter how you go around it you are still in trouble by default now watch this so you have a family of 10 people how many people minus father or mother and then one person out of the six graduates now manages to get a job of 20,000. And everybody saying, oh, yeah, oh, now that God has blessed you, we were there for you. 20,000 divided by 10. So why won't your prayer life be affected? Why will you be able to pray? Where will you get the resources to marry? No, not marry watch this where will you get the resources to marry I'm, I'm being sincere with you marriage in Nigeria at any level is not cheap are, are we together now don't blackmail any territory marriage everywhere today is not cheap you want to marry you are discouraged yourself the wife is discouraged herself your destiny is is hanging in the balance because nothing can, remember you are born again remember you are filled with the spirit of god and satan says exactly this is how i want to manipulate the economy please listen my brothers and sisters i'm telling you this thing to bail you out so that you will have time by the time this happens members are not able to bring offerings not able to bring tight and that means that projects cannot be executed and the man of God himself is stranded. So he has to invent another ungodly way. Are you getting it now? By manipulation. Remember, he didn't plan to be bad. The pressure, the rent on the auditorium, the rent on all of this. There are bills to pay, TV ministry. And he has to invent another theology that can supply. The solution, and I speak to you by the spirit of prophecy, is creativity. Listen to me. Creativity and innovation. There is a spirit in man. My brothers and sisters, there is a spirit in man. There are men and women that must arise. Let us not pray in tongues for nothing. We are not just praying in tongues to throw one another on the ground. The world does not understand that language. The language that conquers Babylon is bringing something that dumbfounds principalities and powers. Even Paul got to a place where it was his being a Pharisee. 
his exceptional quality of knowledge that bailed him out. Right now, everybody laughs at the church because it looks like the church is a place for daft people and idiots. People who don't have any brain. Is that true? The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of prayer. The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of fasting. The spirit of revival is the grace for witty inventions, uncommon manifestations of the hand of God. Listen, let me tell you this. Listen to me. Let me say this, and I, I, I don't know if I will sound proud, but please forgive me. Forgive me. When I started banking, I was taught that there are certain transactions you cannot do until you are there by yourself to sign your signature. As God increased me, I found out that it's not true. That rule was only for some people. Are you getting the point now? There are transactions today that I do that the bank manager himself is the one that does it. Now listen very carefully. I'm not saying this to boast. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm telling you when you are at the edge of creativity, there are rules that will be broken for you and your children. I told you about BVN. I didn't have the time to do BVN. I needed to do BVN in the bank and the, you know the queue I told them I said I don't have this time and they gave me time 8 30 I went to the bank and they opened the bank for me I sat down and did BVN is there anything sir would you are you happy would you like a drink I said ah look at how unfair life can be listen to me this is not some boasting or bragging I want you to be apostolic in your understanding this is not about money at all this is about your soul and the gospel are we together now yes. let us not keep our children in captivity my brothers and my sisters standing between your parents and your children is you we are that bridge you can transfer what you received or you can say Lord let me be the one to suffer it let my child not go through what I've gone through again and God says, are you willing to be this savior for your family? And he said, Lord, I'm available. Are we together now? Please hear what I'm saying. Nobody will ever be coerced or manipulated in this ministry to bring one naira for anything to happen in the gospel. No, 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 no. It will be wicked. And only a wicked man of God will continue to receive seeds from people and they continue to bless him and not be this is this is where sincerely speaking i have a little challenge with we men of god we continue to receive and collect from people but never empower them is wickedness is a scam do you know how available people will be when they are financially free financial freedom will help you know that there are not many things to be done in life most of the distraction is the pursuit for money. It is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep. It's impossible to, pay, to pray three, four, five hours every day when your pocket is crying. It's not true. Not in this country. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, 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 hey. Yahweh. creativity 
creativity, creativity, that God will anoint people to be creative, do new things or old things in new ways, that you set a pace. My brothers and my sisters, let no man deceive you that there is poverty in Zaria. No, it's just that the avenue to find expression is smaller, but there are opportunities beyond your imagination. Every day, millions of Naira continue to exchange hands in this city by only a few people. Creativity. Creativity is not in the realm of men. You don't get creativity through education. Creativity is of the spirit. There is a spirit in man. What were you filled with the Holy Ghost for? There is a spirit in man. Jesus revealed a new way of saving men. Until then we used the blood of bulls. But Jesus came and showed us that the price can be paid once and for all. Never did they know that the Holy Ghost could come and stay on men. He would come and go, but a new thing came. He said, behold, I do a new thing. Remember not the former things. Listen, the instrument of survival in our generation today will be the spirit of creativity. The grace for uncommon inventions. I'm telling you this. Noah won, just like I'm warning Noah warned, just like I'm warning, and told them the rain is coming. I tell you, there is a financial holocaust that is hitting people. The Bible says it, that the earth of men will be brass and under will be iron. But there are people who will be preserved. A remnant that will be preserved. I came out this morning, I usually don't come out, and I decided to just come out in the afternoon i didn't know it was this hot when i came out and the way the the sun it was so serious i just stood and i looked i said my god and i said this is my message oh lord this is exactly what is going to happen to people think of what happens when you stand in the sun for long headache pain yet there are people who will have to be exposed to those things and do you know the pain when you hold all your children together and said, Junior, stand in this sun with me. And Junior is saying, is this how life was meant to be? And Satan now looks at him and says, Junior, come. There is a way out. And Junior says, Daddy, since you cannot provide, you are not a father. Our children will be more audacious than us. Their generation has made them audacious. So if you are a father, you will have to be a father indeed. A mother indeed. Otherwise, we will lose our children. And the law courts have been empowered to make sure you cannot take care of the child. They say, let's take care of your child. Meaning whatever we teach him, provided we are the ones feeding him. No government will feed my child. In the name of Jesus. No. No. I reject it. Koinonia will never stand in front of any government office waiting to receive welfare at the expense of the gospel at the expense of the truth but this will be a blind foolish boast until you understand the power of creativity listen very carefully god is teaching us something tonight that will save us exposure creativity the mind that thinks the mind that works spirit inspired mind the mind that can bet solutions from the realm of the spirit Bad solutions. I was sharing with someone this afternoon of a woman that used to make, I don't know what she makes now, 500,000 in Abuja here. Jobs did not come and everything did not come and she was praying and God gave her an idea. And she went and met certain families that she can teach their children well. And she's not doing a general extramoral lesson. It's a VIP extramoral lesson. And it started like two children three children right in her house and those students were behaving exceptionally well but more than that she was teaching them character character and then she would play koinonia messages too these children were changing in remarkable ways 
and the parents started recommending their circle of influence. That's always what happens when you penetrate one circle. They will call the others like them to you. And like play, like play, this woman would collect 10,000 naira per month. As at the time that I was talking with her, she had like 50 children. Only God knows how much she has now. The gates of destiny will not open on its own. You force it. He said right from the days of John the Baptist and until now, the kingdom suffered violence and it's the violence that will take it by force. The spirit of invention. Listen to me. If you stay with the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, let something from the throne room come upon my mind for my generation. God can put something on your mind, something on your mind and change your life change your life. I saw a picture on the internet one day. The person's clothes, they wrote $400. Then his, his tie, they wrote $20. And then his head, they wrote $0. Are we together? That's a picture of our generation. Packaging. And there is nothing from the realm of the spirit. And I told you that resources only follow productivity. Is God blessing us? I'm already very proud and happy about many of us that God is granting grace. Not just to hustle, but to think. This, this praying in tongues must translate into blessing everything. up. It's not only power to shake. No. It must come upon your mind. Please lay your heart on your head in the next two, three minutes. And I'd like you to pray. And say, Lord, let something come from heaven. Zakatoske Parakata from heaven, oh God. A creative idea from the throne room that I will have the boldness and the courage to execute that will change my life. Please pray, please pray. Sabra Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Creativity. Everybody writes books, but there is a way that God can anoint you to write one book in a certain way. And that book will bless people creativity. Koinonia messages today are blessing people because of the power of creativity. God gave an instruction and said, while people, the regular way is to have message stands at the end of a service and come and pick up. And God says, no, I will do it differently. Don't sell the teachings. I'm not saying selling teachings are wrong. But he said, just put them on, on Facebook. And the angel of the Lord will take them to nations. That one creative idea. There are ladies here, you can have a creative idea. Listen, when you solve the problem of kings, you will eat with them. You solve, you will eat with whatever level. Whoever's level you solve their problem. That's the, the realm you will eat at. Listen, there are some of you here, God can anoint you and put grace on you. You will design clothes that will, the person who will call you to surprise you, you will just hear a call and they will say, who is this? You say, come. Are you the one who brought this design? Come. It's not about many customers. It's about quality people. There are men that represent nations. Listen, listen. I want you to start solving the problem of kings. You have done well to solve the problem of mean men. That God will empower you to solve the problem of kings. 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 Gentiles have already come to your light. It's time for their kings to come. Their kings to come. Is it not in the Bible that kings will entreat your favor? kings 
that God will put something on your mind on your mind grace I heard about somebody please sit down we'll soon pray sit down I heard about a gentleman true story and I was sharing it with someone this afternoon he sat down and this guy was going through a lot of pain and he kept praying and crying before God and the next thing he saw a mowing machine machine that cuts grasses and he had some little savings and he went and bought it when he bought it he went to knock the gate of a very wealthy man who has a big land and say sir I'm a young man I'm a graduate it's just that I didn't have um, any you know no employment and I just bought a machine I know that there are young boys that cut grasses but my machine I can mow it down and then pack everything and the man looked at him and laughed and said I'm impressed these are the kind of men I want you're welcome come in and he came in and mowed the man's grasses he was so well and he told him that not only the grasses I can also trim the flowers listen the person I'm telling you today is a millionaire he deals in everything that has to do with he bought these machines they mow houses for wealthy people and then they sell flowers flowers they to the point that he even imports certain varieties from a crying graduate to a praying one and something comes from heaven and changes your life for as long as we sit down and continue to tell ourselves one day it go better my brothers and my sisters let me tell you you will find out that time is going and the only thing increasing in your life is your age are we together i know a woman a dear precious woman in lagos every time i have the privilege to go there and around that ministry i'm very quick to order her her products health drinks completely organic 100 percent, because the need to live long and live healthy you see when you are poor is not a concern because the work you do will not even allow fats to remain in your body and all of this but by the time god helps you small you find out that at a level is a serious concern and this this woman started selling health drinks and you know beautifully packaged and only God knows how much she makes. There's a lady from Joss, a precious lady. She may be listening now. She came for Koinonia here with a product. She worked for somebody and came and God gave her ideas, a combination for weight loss, healthy, organic weight loss products that is cheaper and affordable, 100% organic. And that lady blessed. I saw it. I was so impressed. When I went to Joss, I told the lady, I said, put it and take it and go and give my parents let them take it and let them be blessed the goal is not far from you when the spirit of creativity comes on you you will see what others don't see it's true anything can bless it depends on how it is served are we together there's one mama that sells kunu. Kunu, sorry for those of you who are not in the north. It's a drink, a local, you know, drink that we take a lot here. I tell you, there's a woman that sells that and the way she does it. Even, you know, sometimes you just want to get all of these things and she can supply you whether a gallon or whatever it is. Please, my brothers and my sisters, lay your hand on your head again and command creativity to work for you. Rebuke laziness rebuke excuses there has to be a way out of it the warfare that is executed through creativity only creative men can survive upon that mountain there is a way out there is a way out there has to be a way out of struggling hallelujah Please sit down. Let me tie it up somewhere so that we'll round up for tonight. Creativity. Creativity. The third key to productivity. One is exposure. Two is creativity and innovation. Number three is competence. You want to be productive. The third key is competence. 
the ability to standardize your results hmm. competence the ability to standardize your results maintain quality predictable quality predictable quality anything that comes from you has a predictable expectation i know if you're a lesson teacher i already know what a child will get because you are there if you are a chef i already know the food cannot be delicious today and nonsense tomorrow you are not competent competent is a product of mastery the mastery of the laws that govern that operation predictable competence listen to me when your results are not standardized kings will not come to you kings do not come to a fluctuated result stability for kings mean mastery so when you stabilize and standardize your results whether spiritually intellectually or otherwise you call the attention of kings the leaders in any industry are men who have standardized their results you cannot keep fluctuating forever as a man of god as a businessman as a career person there must be a level of standardized results everybody say competence hmm. be strict on yourself set a high standard on yourself don't celebrate mediocrity just because you do something small challenge yourself think global think global think global you can start small but let your mind be global are we together I was listening to one of Dr. Miles Munro's mentees and he was sharing a story that when Dr. Miles was alive, he looked at him one day and he called his name and he says, young man, you have a fabulous grace. You are charismatic, but you are not, you are not vocal and articulate. And if you want to go into the communications industry, you have to be vocal and articulate. The gentleman came from a background of all these yo-yo boys. And so they just speak slangs all around. And he said, no, if you want to talk to presidents and talk to great people, you want them to call your attention, then you must pay the price to learn. And he says, wow, he was touched. And he made up his mind that he was going to take an extra program to work on himself. He went that far. And that gentleman today, is the one who heads Miles Monroe's church, Dr. Burroughs. He made up his mind that he was going to develop himself. Learn to delay gratification and insist until you are competent. Don't wear tomorrow's cloth today. You walk naked tomorrow. Don't eat tomorrow's food today. You will die of hunger tomorrow. Don't be ashamed of rising gradually, but insist, insist. I got to find out that a number of our precious ladies here are fashion designers. And for one of them, when I got to see what she does, I was blown away. I was, I was, so, I was impressed beyond imagination. I said, you mean you do this? She said, yes. I said, no, if this is what you do, then the sky is your limit. The world needs to know that you do this. Listen, let me tell you. When you are competent, don't be afraid to let the world know that I am here. You bring embarrassment to yourself and all those who are connected to you when you have not done your assignment and then you are calling the attention of the world. The fig tree had no fruit, but it was calling the attention of Jesus. When Jesus came hungry, he cursed it. That's what will happen to any man that calls the attention of the world when you are not ready. But when you are ready and you've done your homework, please stand tall and tell the world that with all humility, God has put something here. Come and see. That's why we boldly open up and we tell people, God is doing something great in Zaria. Come and see. When I travel by the grace of God to go for ministrations, I go with confidence. I know that the people will never be the same. Because the message is powerful 
and there is grace that backs the message. There's nothing the devil will do about it forever. That's why I continue to train and challenge you. My brothers and my sisters, when you become competent, the kings of Zaria will call you. When you become competent, you can be in Zaria and the kings of Abuja will call you. The kings of everywhere will call you. They have not called you because they are still studying you and they are noticing the fluctuations around your result. Standardize your results and watch the desperation of kings. Is God speaking to us? Be competent. Don't be small. Oh, I'm a chef. I'm a chef. What do you do? Just because you can eat your food does not mean that's the food of kings. Challenge yourself. Are we together now? One time, a great man was celebrating his birthday and they just thought to make him a nice cloth and my tailor was called upon and told to sew for that man a very very big and wealthy man and then he was encouraged to do a good job and i'm sure he may be listening now and when he sewed the clothes for that man from that time that man started calling him now he asked him i heard recently again to make another set of clothes let me tell you competence is addictive when people meet competent people they don't easily let them go no there are not many competent people in the world you can only complain for a while you will come back be so competent that you become an endangered species i remember years ago a dear woman was getting married in zaria and she went to bring in a uh, what they call these people that makeup artist from Kano and I asked a question I said does that mean there is not one of my dear people here that is an exceptional makeup artist who will like you to ruin her face on her wedding day the wedding day is not the day of trial and error if you are not competent provable competence kings and queens will not call you listen when you become competent you can name your price and the world will still say thank you Is God blessing you? Competence. You need to shake off poverty. Don't just sit down and say, Oh God, um, now that the job is not coming or what I read. No. God is giving you a mind that can sit down. Listen, Koinonia, I told you that I will never pastor a people who are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit but poor and broke and mediocre. I will not be that man of God. For as long as you are under this grace, you must be balanced. And that includes your finances. I trust God for times when by the grace of God, your children can come and at age 10, they are happy. They are focusing on matters of destiny. You are not waiting for them to become 18 years fast so that they will marry and come and pay you back. This is the place of encounter. That's what God is doing in your life tonight. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life is changed do to me what you want listen some of us our parents may have failed but turn them into a success by being successful so that they can say my assignment was to give birth to you and since i gave birth to you i may have failed in every other thing but because you arrived successfully your success has turned me back to a success The mother of Jabez called him Jabez because of sorrow. I don't know what else she called him when he, become, he became an honorable man. There are names that are given to you when you are blessed. Your parents will find names and coin names that represent the excitement you have created in their spirits. 
are we together being in zaria is not a cause being in the north is not a cause being in nigerian is not a cause and the secret is not running to canada the secret is not running to europe there are people under bridges in all of these nations it is the grace that follows you and the intelligence that god gives you are we together by the time we are building our international headquarters these are there are people here that will single-handedly by the spirit of god say apostle look we are writing this let this not be an issue not moral support no that people like here who will be so blessed and sign a million bibles and say please take them to the northeast noiseless impact are we together now there are many of our children in this ministry some of them you see them come and many of them is only god that supplies for their daily bread and is only god that takes care of them when will god bless you to a point that one day you look at one child and say young man you were about to fall but because i came ah i am alive that was changed thank you for giving to the lord i am so glad you came you know your impact by what people do around your birthdays that you have to remind people that it's your birthday is a sign that your destiny is closed people should be excited and know that my god this blessing to my life what an opportunity to celebrate him there are people today you still look at their grave and their grave is a salmon you can stand on their grave and live inspired he came he saw he conquered productivity the ability to trust God for an innovative spirit listen turn your ideas to products and services you are only worthy of reward when your ideas become products and services served with excellence until they become products and services you are only worthy of commendation not reward I cook once in a while. I'm very good, but that's just how I am. Hey, that means that the financial squalor that is coming will meet up with you. I don't know what the best restaurant in this city is. I don't know. But I thank God that there are people rising already. Here and there. It is my goal and my prayer that the best of the best of the best of the best of every level of productivity will come out from this house it's not in a competitive manner listen one of the benefits of productivity is the privilege of influence the moment you are productive and you lead a field you are given grace to mentor to build to set the rules that guide the understanding of other people and this is one of the keys to kingdom advance you never become influential as a mediocre it is when you when you set the standard and you lead the field are we together you must challenge yourself i vowed a vow to myself while preparing for this meeting i said apostle you have not started oh you have not started the trickles of results that God has given, praise God for it. But Mr. Man, it's time to get to gear two and do something higher and greater. It is time for a certain levels of graces. I was praying and I said, Lord, give me the anointing for three diseases. One, cancer. Two, HIV. We have seen it in pockets, but I mean that a signature upon your life. This is what money cannot buy. Lord, grant that grace. Let it not be by mistake again. 
I don't want people to come and testify and say I was healed of cancer. Apostle laid hands and I said, I'm not even sure. No. I want a realm where we know that you came here and we can smile and say, Mr. Man, dust your vision. Put your books back in order because you are walking away free. There is a grace. It's not out of jealousy or a need. No, 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 no. It is how you become a blessing. And then kings will come to you and say, our money means nothing in the face of this situation. And you tell them, there is a system in this kingdom that can help men. The little grace that God has given me, I am blessed and humbled as I see it change the lives of people. When people come with situations that I know are within the grace that God has given me, I'm excited. I, I feel happy for them because I know they are coming back with a testimony. If that does not happen to you, what kind of man of God do you want to become? When you become a conventional man of God, you will be a competitive man of God, a jealous man of God, an angry man of God, and eventually a backsliding man of God. But there is a height, an exceeding high mountain, where God keeps you. And from that mountain, you can tell people, look at what Jesus can do. Say, don't mention Jesus. Say, that's all I know. And they say, if we drive him, we're in trouble. So we have to leave you there. And you shout it at the rooftop. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. That's the anthem of our generation. Productivity, the ability to be useful, the ability to be needed, the ability to force a space for yourself for the sake of the kingdom in the table of destiny. You may not have been born with that privilege, but my brother and my sister, let me tell you this. There are men and women who did not have any advantage, but they made up their minds that they will challenge themselves. That out of Zaria, God will spring forth something that will shift this nation. Men and women who defy unemployment. Men and women who defy mediocrity. Oh, at your level, you are anointed too much. You know, people send me all kinds of texts. An apostle of uncommon grace and power. I thank God for it, but I just look at the text and I laugh. Do you know what uncommon grace and power is? All these programs, listen, let me give you a frank advice. Program, one program here, one event here, one crusade here, one conference here. You won't grow that way. A, a conference is not kind. You won't grow that way. Many of us are obsessed, passionate. You have a church of two members. There are 10 crusades, 10 conferences in one year. What are you doing? Be honest with yourself nobody grows that way you sit down and you are sharpened and filed you know how a razor blade is when you buy a new razor blade you touch it on the paper Pia! that's how it goes that's what god is saying you see god lifting all these our people now worship team gradually gradually when, when they all come to me, I tell them, go and sit down. Because I'm the one supervising the sharpening by the Spirit. You can feel sharp because you cut wood. But what you are going to be cutting are metals. Not woods. Metals. 
metals there are machines that ride through metals there are machines that cut stones do you know the the, the strength of those materials you cut through those brah, just cut everything there are others where you subject them through certain kinds of woods they will hook and the machine will stop turning that's nonsense and inferior product it's a sign that that was not a good product but when you buy it you buy something it will cut through rocks and pieces them that's what God is telling me to. by the time you stand in all the millions you are looking for you will be so valuable oh I, at my age I think I should have built a house don't worry just stay somebody will bring a car key bring a house key bring all kinds of things and give you be careful unhealthy comparison will destroy you we live in a world that is very carnal i teach you success principles we just finish success systems but be careful unhealthy comparison at my age i am 40 at my age i'm supposed to have five cars and three bungalows okay sorry you don't have it now so what are you going to do about it I, I don't know but god is most handsome in this season and the entire circumference of your pursuit is cars and houses you are in trouble Lord. you are in trouble you are in big trouble learn to know when your life is under attack it's not when you see a spirit appearing there are things around your life that are pointers immediately there are suggestions suggestions that come to your spirit nonsense suggestions unhealthy comparison look at that other pastor he's not as anointed as me that's an attack cast it immediately hallelujah the dominion mandate let's see how far god will help us in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we're looking at part one in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 man as we know theologically speaking is the apex of god's creation and when god i think uh, media just take this part of this teaching and make a podcast out of it huh this this fiery how many minutes we spent make a podcast out of it just carry it like a little tool of revival keep it in your phone whenever you sense you are backsliding just use it plug it and sleep while you are sleeping you will see me yeah it's not pride i will help you and stamp every nonsense yes god doesn't show people people's faces just because they are anointed it's a mystery i've said it many people would think it's witchcraft if you see me in your dream wake up and rejoice something serious happened to you hallelujah you must have the arsenals when you are discouraged what do you have in your spiritual arsenal is there a message is there a tool i tell you what to that person who has not programmed you don't prepare for battle at the war front you station them there are tools whenever i feel that i'm losing spiritual favor there are tools already ah, there are tools there are tools there are tools god gave me tools tools whenever you feel you are lazy that fasting grace is not there I tell you one correct message listen to it in the night where all the noise has gone off the light sit down quiet and you finish that thing you start the fasting the next day i tell you i tell you and your stomach cries you say you are joking not based on not based on what i had you found out you are not reading books again you keep buying them but you don't read so people keep seeing them and think you are reading them and then one day you listen to one message the word is always god's bailout system if you exempt yourself from the word you're already in trouble there should be a word for seasons in your life there are times honestly you are discouraged you need a word that lifts you everybody will not have your time you must learn to have your own time get the word and sit down hear messages that build you and all of a sudden your faith rises hallelujah i 
feel like praying. No, this thing is on me. I feel like praying. I wish I were alone. I feel like praying. Let me tell you how what to do. Whenever your spirit is dead, don't go to bed. Pray immediately. Make sure you can sleep praying, but don't waste it. There are times this kind of things happen to you alone. You are listening to a message every time every time because the moment you feel it is like a spiritual feeling station something is happening prayer is like opening the tank you see that you open the tank oh god feel me let that anointing come let that fire come and then it comes upon your spirit these are simple spiritual techniques that keep people strong some of you after hearing this now you now relax back to carnality you see that carnality doesn't mean something evil you just come down to the this is what it means to be in the spirit your spirit is alive ready to receive like a womb like a woman's womb ready to receive seed see that everything that comes from heaven bam, like a woman takes in you take in something and immediately and the realm of the spirit doesn't work with nine months you can take in immediately and certain things happen and you will birth it out immediately hallelujah the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet Genesis 1 verse 26 and God said let us make man in number one our image everybody say image number two after our likeness and then he says let them always oh, projected have dominion please stop the bible says let us make man in two using two dimensions the first is our image now until adam we know that already that there were already inhabitants upon the earth right other dispensations carried different kinds and types of humanoid species adam is not the first man are we together the first man who opened up our dispensation but there have been other humanoid species again and again upon the earth are we together now who had bodies bodies that were spiritual bodies that were not mortal bodies that were made out of different substances there were dispensations where the men that lived in those dispensations had bodies that were made of light quantized light there were dispensations where men had bodies that were made of other substances not earthly and not god's own kind of body they were heavenly body as we call it but then there was a grading of them according to different di dimensions are we together now but then when it came to the making of man listen all other species were made in the likeness of god but never in his image the image of god was what lucifer wanted lucifer was already in the likeness of god the likeness of god means god has two hands the bible doesn't tell us he has um the seven eyes and seven horns are just prophecies are we together now god has two legs he stands on one head there are creatures all kinds of things but i'm saying god as a person when jesus came the bible called him the full expression of the image of the christ so we see him carrying that form all other humanoid species were in the likeness of man of god but man was in the image the image of god is a spiritual quality right the the imprint of his person the very factor that makes god god is where you get the root word kabod glory the essence of god was vested in his image image so man was made this time around not just in the likeness of god but the image of god and then god told us straight up the purpose for making that man watch this he never said let them be preachers he never said let them be apostles please listen he never said let them be pastors he didn't say let them conduct koinonia are we together the mandate was let them have dominion write that word down dominion dominion is a language of governance it's a political language a language of governance 
dominion is a language of legislature legislature has to do with enacting or enforcing laws enacting birthing them or enforcing the ones that have already been passed dominion means to take charge take charge of a territory dominion means to take charge dominion talks of stewardship please write it down so let them take charge let them legislate let them govern let them have stewardship this is god's original idea a great mentor dr miles Monroe, will tell you that's god's original idea now watch this in theology there's what we call the law of first use right the law of first use means that whenever you want to study the context of a word the first key is to go and find where it was first used the context upon which it was used is the anchor with which you will use to interpret every other appearance of it are we together if it veers off from the first context then you must use another strategy of interpreting it are we together now so the first time we see the word dominion it was attached to man the first time we see god making man he didn't sit down and rest later on and then he woke up and said man i don't know what to do with you okay let's try dominion have it and see he says let them have dominion dominion stewardship control redemption as we know was a veering off of the original plan please understand this everything from genesis 4 listen carefully everything from genesis 4 down up until acts chapter 1 was an extra curriculum added to it the original agenda of god had to do with dominion that's why i read for you revelations and genesis everything that is in between came as a remedy system are we together please you have to understand this god's original idea was not to have the fivefold ministry god's original idea was not to have churches uh -uh. god's original idea is not to have crusades god's original idea was not to have altar calls god's original idea was not to have healing services all of those things were predicated upon something that happened we call it the fall of man man's use of his will to defy god's will in rebellion led to other provisions so everything from genesis chapter 4 the law and and the annals of the kings and everything that happened down they were of course there were adumbrations but immediately from that time it was a system to be able to get man to qualify back to carry out the dominion mandate listen the dominion mandate was and is still god's desire and intent for man now many believers do not know this we come around church activities which is good we come around spiritual growth which is good we even come around going to heaven which is not a bad idea the bible says it so we believe it but much more than going to heaven are we together now much more than all of these things oh i'm looking forward to my jesus coming someday the bible says to look forward to his appearance however god's original idea for you was not heaven god's original idea for you was earth it is still earth it will always be earth his plans can change but his purposes are eternal are we learning something so imagine for instance um can i use you come my goal for this gentleman everybody watch this my goal for this gentleman is to go and carry that water you see that water that's what i want to carry so at the beginning of the journey i have stated the end from the beginning because that's the character of god he reveals the end from the beginning then you start living that script now 
this guy starting his journey something happens are we together let's assume that he injures himself through whatever it is now i temporarily suspend i suspend this agenda of him getting there to treat something that went wrong with him are we together that is everything that came from the law until jesus it was a fair enough of the original manuscript to be able to bring man back to the position now when you come back to that position and it so happens that this time around it must be in christ listen so when you now come back to that position you are supposed to continue that agenda but when you get distracted and you now forget about the agenda and you are doing other things the one who sent you will never have fulfillment and satisfaction are we together the bible says better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof thank you so there are many people doing several things just, just calm down with this for a moment i want everybody to hear me everybody say marriage shout it marriage. say employment. employment shout it employment. say promotion. promotion say houses, houses. say cars. cars say long life, long life. divine health divine bungalow. bungalow just say everything i say duplex Cheap. Cheap. Prosperity. Prosperity. Hold on. All those things are requirements that help us back so that we can continue this agenda. In themselves, they are useless as far as God's eternal counsel is concerned. Their usefulness only comes in in how they help you align to fulfill this are we together so marriage on its own is useless to you if it cannot find a bearing to this car jeep on its own is useless to you until it finds a bearing let me tell you one of the most useless ways of living on earth is not to have the dominion mandate at work in your life is not to have the consciousness of God's kingdom agenda yet you are achieving things so at the end of it like the rich fool you gather money oh I made wise financial decisions and God looks at you have you read in the Bible that our works will be tried with fire what do you think will be the basis that means there are people that you will see like a heap and fire will pass <laughs> And at the end of it, what will be there will not be up to my hand. They will be gauged with respect to their nearness to this agenda. Stewardship of earth. Kingdom advancement, we call it. Please, you must understand this. If you don't understand this, you will never be an effective Christian. We have been so distracted. We have veered off this. Prosperity teaching without a kingdom understanding will lead people to carnality and useless living are we together teaching people to wear nice clothes wear these and people claim cars and claim all of this all those things are only useful to the degree to which so we have a church that is full of largely carnal and lost driven people not because the object of their desire is wrong in itself but it has no kingdom bearing are we together so someone looks at a jeep just pass and say hey i claim it and god says okay with respect to what i say god just leave me i claim it i shall claim it there are ways you can know immature believers and there are ways you can know that they have not been trained well let me tell you how to measure growth in the spirit when a man's life has been aligned to the purposes of the kingdom and everything that proceeds from him with respect to his desires are only there to create a platform for this dominion mandate that person is a mature believer are we together if i ask you what are your concerns now Many of us will lift our hands and say, money, money, sir. Direct money, just money. Naira, 
like that pounds dollars money another person will say child child this my womb must carry a child you ask the person why are you so desperate for a child you know what the person is going to say largely all the people who married uh, uh what around my my time have children some have two some have five some have ten i'm alone and that's the reason why the person wants a child are we together ask someone why are you going to school say are you joking you want me to be hungry Abby? okay if you are full what is it for say, well i'm for everybody it's like that i need to get a good job then another person says i'm not getting a good job i'm a businessman because he went to one seminar both of them are useless as far as the kingdom is concerned if you cannot state bringing your strong reason let me tell you a chip you've heard me preach this again and again the dominion mandate remains god's desire and anybody who plunges into that agenda has commanded both the hand and the heart of god both the hand and the heart of god supplies don't just follow your needs they follow your pursuit of the dominion mandate prosperity long life healing all of these things pursue you when you pursue this jesus said it this way 633 matthew but seek first the kingdom kingdom he didn't say seek first heaven the kingdom is not heaven seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and then he says in doing so all other things shall be added unto you are we together it is God's desire that we reign in life and look at me the concept of reigning in life has nothing to do with usurping authority over people please give us Genesis 126 again God meticulously listed everything he wanted us to have dominion over let's look at it please 126 let's hurry up Genesis 1 26 and God said let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion read on now over what the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth notice that man was not mentioned the dominion mandate is not usurping authority and control over men when you do that it's called witchcraft it's called manipulation it's an attitude of the antichrist every government that oppressed people had a revolt historically at a point in time the people were angry you know why there's chaos and anarchy because people were not designed to be dominated they were designed to be led they were not designed to be ruled when in bible days when god wanted to punish either his people or your enemies he gave you authority to treat them like animals so he would cause them to become slaves he would cause them to become servants he would cause them to serve you not like a man serving somebody he loves subject them to slavery slavery had always been a way of god communicating his dissatisfaction either with his people or people who made themselves his enemies listen the moment you find out an appetite to rule over men i don't mean lead men rule over men is the spirit of the antichrist there is a programming that has come from babylon that is at work in your life unfortunately this system that we live in has designed people to live that way right from primary school they clap for you and give you award for taking first now the idea is not whether you did well or not the idea is that you beat other people so they clap for you in their presence now their humiliation becomes your trophy are we together as you hold that award and look at your closest rival and smile in victory and watch the pain of the person you see footballers when they win arsenal man you the ones who win flaunt the cup and you see the other people crying and that cry is the joy and the triumph of the people is an antichrist system 
Now, of course, we use it all the time. Some of you have schools, use it. The Lord help you, but I'm, we're examining the word. It's not supposed to be that way. So, now you find out that students from primary school, secondary school, their agenda is not to do well. Their agenda is to beat others. They clap for you with respect to how you trample others. That's why malpractice comes in. It's an effort to force your way to the top, whether you are ready or not. So you manipulate ways. They even name generators. I pass my. You see where those revelations came from? They look very subtle, but they are devilish understandings sponsored by Babylon. What is your neighbor's? Um, 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 what is the issue with your neighbor and your life? No, I pass my neighbor. So you now compare yourself on healthy competition. Every time men try to usurp authority over men, it's now going to be survival of the fittest. Whoever can oppress someone, are we together? But God's idea is to lead men, not oppress them. In fact, they asked Jesus this question. Who will be the greatest? You see the disciples? Greatest, greatest, not who will be great. Who will be the greatest, the chiefest of all? And Jesus looked at them. And then he said, the, the Pharisees and all of this use that method of leadership. He said, but it should not be among you. Whoever wants to be great must be your minister, your servant. That the way up is to serve people, not truncate them. This is a good message for a pastor's conference because we live in a time where men of God in the name of spiritual authority I believe in authority have pocketed the destinies of other people some of you here are victims of this and you need deliverance fast where a man of god takes your destiny and puts it in his pocket he may be well-meaning but he or she was also indoctrinated into that understanding and they make it look like you leave me you die if i ask for money you don't ask questions if i come to your house and say rice you say yes sir beans yes sir everything yes sir and they use scripture and threaten people it is antichrist the moment you find out that you are forcing people to respond to you outside of their will you are subscribing to another system it is not of God what of workers in the house of God you you must be a worker what of partners you promise this is your suit you are going to start sewing 50,000 and the guy says how about I'm, I'm your boss in office I know how much I'm paying you 50,000 that thing looks nice it is not God's way hello I know you don't like what I'm saying. We're teaching on the dominion mandate. Many of the chaos and the anarchy that we have around our society, that passion to oppress people, that passion to leave people bankrupt of information because knowledge gives light. Is that true? That's why many times they do not want people to be educated because when they are enlightened, they can know their rights and they can stand up. So they keep people in ignorance. There are systems and nations that the strength of that oppression is hinged upon the lack of orientation of the people. Then we have carved out a name. We call them masses. Masses. And then all kinds of sociologists began to come up with their their postulations to call religion the opium of the masses people like Karl Marx and the rest came up with all kinds of things it was smart you're a sociologist answer it but oh, that is junk I'm sure wherever he is now he has known the truth listen let me tell you you see the Holy Spirit is the oldest authorized spiritual entity on earth today he's worth your trust are we together? Everything started in his presence till now. The dominion mandate is not about usurping authority over people. Listen, the dominion mandate is not about outshining people. The dominion mandate is not outshining pastors, outshining men of God. I have larger crowds than you. That means we are taking over. The concept of take over must be well defined. Because for many people, take over means to come and push you. 
you had a small church we came and within one year we are the ones in zaria we are taking over we have to be careful because most of what we call kingdom advancement is not only sheep stealing is sheep killing sheep destruction and so on and so forth let me clarify for us what the dominion mandate is it has nothing to do with outshining people it has nothing to do with competition it has everything to do with the governance of the earth it has everything to do with the stewardship of god's system to the end that the fullness of his glory kabod his essence his lifestyle would find expression in the earth john uh, matthew chapter 6 we'll read from verse um 9 and 10 jesus is teaching us how to pray and then he tries to instill in us a dominion and kingdom paradigm and he says give us matthew chapter yes he says after this manner therefore pray our father which art in heaven we hallow or we revere your name then verse 10 says thy kingdom come thy kingdom come your agenda that domain you have carved out for us we want your influence the word kingdom is a combination of two words a king's domain dominion the sphere where the dominion of a king finds expression kingdom are we together now so god's prayer for us is that we pray that on this side of his kingdom that the reality of our stewardship the reality of the purposes of god be established across the earth the same way it is done in heaven it has nothing to do with ministry it has nothing to do with usurping men ministry prosperity are only tools to help us say prosperity is only a tool divine health is only a tool so you see when you have these things the dominion mandate consumes you they will never steal away god from your life that was the mistake of the rich fool he thought life was only about making money when he now made money and built bands he secured himself hear what he told himself my soul find rest in other words i have come to the end of my pursuit nothing else to be done and god says no this is a rich fool tonight because you are useless as far as my agenda is concerned tonight this night your soul is required of you what is the key to carrying out the dominion mandate the next teachings i'm going to be teaching us the different dimensions of the dominion mandate but what is the key the key is in romans chapter 5 and verse 17 another scripture that has not been properly understood by many romans chapter 5 verse 17 let's see where god will help us tonight it says for if by one man's offense that one man now um death reigned by one adam the first adam right adam the husband of eve for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more listen they that receive two things what's number one abundance of take note of that number two and of the gift of righteousness these are the two requirements to be able to execute the dominion mandate effectively number one the gift of righteousness the bible did not put them in the order they should come it just gave you information the first thing you need to be able to carry out the dominion mandate effectively that mandate of exercising god's sovereign control on earth is the ability to be a possessor of what the bible calls the gift of righteousness then number two abundance abundance of grace the bible says whoever is a possessor of these two realities can reign effectively in the earth reigning in the earth is not just you see dominion there are different aspects of dominion i'll be teaching us in other series there are dimensions of dominion authority and the ability to legislate is only one of the dimensions that's not all there is to dominion creativity you see that 
authority has to do with legislature through your words through decrees creativity has to do with legislature influence through your seeds through your ideas right there are many dimensions i'll be teaching you so executing authority the capacity to speak and have things happen is only one of the dimensions of dominion unfortunately many people come around there and they feel because i speak and some things happen i'm walking in dominion you'll be very blessed by this series it will help you to reset what you call christianity so that you will arrange things accordingly and know what your ultimate pursuit should be because there's confusion in the body of christ for many like we always teach and well-meaning and innocently the goal is heaven and that's not a lie but the bible never teaches going to heaven as the end of all things it's not in the bible i'm a christian are we together i believe in heaven but that's that's not it you read your bible the bible talks about this old earth and the whole heavens passing away a new earth coming and god living where he is i told you heaven listen heaven was never initially god's throne there is there was a day that there was no heaven yet god was alive and was existing the bible says he dwells in unapproachable light he created heaven and put his throne there and that's why he say heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool he is going to move that throne now to the earth so god did not used to live in heaven no he created heaven for reasons that we are going to find out the bible as we know has not revealed to us clearly these are some of the hidden mysteries that eating of the tree of life will supply us when we get to the new jerusalem that's why our knowledge will still be unfolding are we together now we are going to find out because there certainly was a reason why the heavens and the earth were created genesis 1 verse 1 they were not just created just because of adam uh -uh. they were fixed back because of adam god's original idea listen carefully with respect to making heavens in the beginning and the earth what we even call the dominion mandate given to our dispensation is a subset of that ultimate agenda we will find out revelation ends with the beginning of a new dispensation are you blessed That means there are many things we are going to find out. Let me give you a few information. <laughs> Should I say this? Hmm. Some of the spirit beings that we generically call angels were once inhabitants in the earth. They had their dispensation. Are we together? And the same way we have what we call judgment day and rapture. A similitude of that event happened to them. They now are still excelling in light growing and they have been authorized together with the angels to come and serve the saints and help us complete this dispensation angels are not the only spirit beings in the realm of the spirit anytime you see any other thing that is not god and it's not the four living creatures we just say they are angels in a sense we are right the word is angelio a messenger they are always sent ones from the throne but in terms of classification and configuration no angels are not the only spirit beings that are sent on errand read your bible mount zion there are many inhabitants there there are spirits of just men made perfect correct there are innumerable company of angels there are all kinds of things that happen there in that atmosphere of mount zion am i boring you are you learning something when we know this you see even the things we call rema are only relative because they are not strange to the realm of the spirit they are only coming to us newly demons know some of these things i tell you theologically speaking you see when these spirits came you you know the bible talks about those we call the nephilims and other kinds of giants who the bible says were a product of these spirit beings the bible calls them sons of god is that true sons of god who slept with the daughters of men and gave birth to people who were half men and half spirit entities like oak the king of bashan goliath of god and many other people who appeared we see that they were superhuman 
some of them had six fingers six toes it was some of this interaction with these spirit beings that also taught women what we call the mystery of seduction all of these things were part of the doctrines is what paul together calls the doctrines of demons are we together now it was some of the propositions that these spirit beings brought to the daughters of men that made them to like them and even allow them to have children with them that's that's another separate lecture again but just for you to know and to understand that a lot has happened in this earth and if we do not stay fixed upon what authorize our being here we will live very useless lives as a church and as individuals say amen this teaching will give meaning to your prosperity this teaching will give meaning to your fasting and prayer do you know why many people get born again and stop there have you seen people that when you tell them oh i'm praying i'm on a program i'm on a this and that they look at you and say what that's a waste because they do not understand this so for them the entire scope of their theology is escapism from hell and then you stand and continue to manage your life through repeated repentance until rapture comes the day you hear that trumpet do anything you want you are safe you see the theology that's a torturous and frustrating theology jesus said occupy till i come the word occupy does not mean build houses advance with those influence until i come there's something we are missing that's why our young ones are not interested in god again because our marketing of what we give them as Christianity is ugly and unattractive. So you see a young child of 12 years and now put stringent rules around that child. And then you tell the child, be born again. Then the child is born again and say, okay, daddy, what next? He says, are you asking me? Let's go to church. And he says, daddy, I'm going to church every Sunday. Now you say, I should add Wednesday. He says, oh, yeah, join baptismal class. I see that you are too idle. Then the guy joins a baptismal class. Then they teach him the doctrines of the denomination. Then the day for water baptism comes. They baptize him, give him a, an English name, and hand over a certificate. And then the child says, okay, what do I do again? He says, just continue coming to church. And he says, no, no, no. Let me, what is all this? I cannot just continue coming to church. Daddy, I think I have grace to dance. If I see you dancing in my house, I will kill you by myself. My child, dance? Okay, daddy, I have the grace to paint. Paint for what? Serve God. So they have taught you, painting and serving God are not the same. And you leave painting. And you leave this. Daddy, I think I have a passion about broken marriages. Say, don't be stupid. Concentrate and grow spiritually. Jesus is coming very soon. Now, that's a very innocent doctrine. Don't get me wrong. I'm not being sarcastic. But that thing, many of you seated looking at me now, is one of the reasons why you left the things of God. Because you couldn't, under, there was no logic to it. Someone comes from being a Muslim and then becomes a child of God, maybe a Christian and all of that, and you sit the person down, and the person now says, Okay, I have escaped this, I'm a child of God. Say, so What do I do now? Become a worker in church. Then the person is a worker in church, and then one day the person says, Honestly, I don't know what, what is going on here. What is the meaning of this? Where are we going? Just say, Don't worry, oh, this thing, there's a reward. And the person is saying, I don't understand. Then others have said, no, God could not keep us like this. Let's add flavor to it. Then they swung to the other side of the pendulum and the church has become a place of just fun and laughter. And say, let's just enjoy ourselves. And they say, we are occupying. You are not occupying. That's laziness and idleness. Are we together? So we have all just fun and play around play and play and joke and take the church of God to become like a museum or an amusement park. No. Both are wrong. Let me tell you, when you know the dominion mandate, you will be so busy you will not even, you will think age is not on your side. You see people wake up in the morning with a sense of urgency. They, they are, the issue of heaven is settled. See, let me tell you, um, we are going, I hope that one of these series will look at redemption. And I'm going to be showing you that the issue of heaven is not, is not supposed to be a frightful thing. Are we together? The issue of heaven is like an admission letter into a university. When you have an admission letter, it is possible to lose the admission letter. But you cannot be in 200 level and all you are thinking about is your admission letter. No. You have lectures. Is that true? 
you are looking at something else imagine a student in 300 level and he's moving where's my admission letter and he opens the box and sees it and keeps it and says, ah thank you jesus that's what we do with this rapture heaven thing i'm not against it you know me i love people i love souls but having that kind of mindset will never help you to be effective that's why we don't treasure creativity that's why we don't treasure dominion why because we think the most important thing is let me just be careful god can come any day and any time let him just come and find me your your being fit going to heaven listen going to heaven has never been something that a man did for himself by qualification you have to understand this the part where you get that you merit is the reward of crowns is based on your works utilizing the grace that was supplied for you and the degree to which you advance the kingdom to it with it will determine your rewards we will not get the same rewards when a child is born we say he came from where please help me <laughs> now that child is now afraid to go back uh, okay, let me not let's let's not talk about this thing i don't want to make us feel very bad I need to clarify a lot of things. I hope that God will grant me grace to teach it. The book of life, rapture, heaven, the conditions for heaven, and all of that. Because you see, the Bible lets us know clearly that what the Bible calls, what we have called the judgment day, is a season of reward for the saints. The Bible clearly lists those who will be punished, who should be afraid. Why should I be in Christ? Why should I be walking with God and my life is perpetually a subject of fear? Fear. Those things look nice. You know, sometimes you have to shake people a little bit to get serious with their lives. But it's impossible to serve God that way. There was a time I think there was a propaganda. There have been many about the coming of Christ. And people till today, people still come up with visions. I saw that Jesus Christ is coming in August 24th. And you see people, people sold their houses, land that they would have been rich now. Their children are suffering. Foolish people made stupid business decisions, gave away land. You know, people shaved their head. They were waiting and all, and, and, and all of that. And nothing really happened. God does not teach us to wait for him this way. The Bible already tells us that the coming of Christ will be like the days of Noah. Let me tell you let me i'm sharing with you the dominion mandate the coming of christ will not take believers unaware did you hear what i said the coming of christ i repeat will not take believers unaware please give me first thessalonians chapter five we are reading one to four first thessalonians chapter five is god helping us we're going to find someone and pray tonight first thessalonians chapter five but of the times, please look up. Whether you are inside, outside, I want us to read it together. Okay, I'll read it. I'll tell you where to join. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write to you. So he's talking to who? Brethren, the church. Is that true? Verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Many theologians, well-meaning, stop here. And they keep telling people he's coming like a thief in the night and coming like it the bible did not stop here it was paul himself who had his revelation uh, his knowledge of the mystery by revelation are we together verse 3 for when they shall say those who are without when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they, 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 they shall not escape. If you're a child of God, read the next verse with all your heart. One, two, give us verse four, please, quickly. One, two, read. One more time. So if that day overtakes you, what is the sign that you are in darkness? Is that true? 
The Bible says we are the light of the world. Is that true? It says, but ye brethren, I'm speaking to you of the times and the seasons, and I am telling you that it will be in the similitude of the day of Noah. That day, look at it, it's in your Bible. I didn't write this. That day will not overtake you as a thief. Why? Because the spirit of God is in us. There is a salt covenant. We are joined. He that is joined to Christ is one spirit. Are we together? You can never serve God when you live in fear of rapture and fear of heaven and fear of hell. Growing up, there used to be a word that the old folks used to use. Assurance of not salvation. Assurance of salvation. Assurance of admission letter. Assurance of job. That's why every time they give you a job, they give you a little paper. It's a token to prove to you that you are there. The Bible says God gave us his spirit as a proof, as a seal of our redemption. As a proof that we are now the begotten of him. That he's no longer the firstborn, um, the only begotten. He's now the first begotten of we the brethren are we together now so that god is not ashamed he's not ashamed to call us brethren but has given us the same spirit whereby we cry abba father it doesn't mean people don't backslide it doesn't mean people don't derail but i want you to know this there is a way we have been teaching. I'm showing you the things that have occupied us so that we do not focus on the dominion mandate. 80% of the church is occupied by just preparing themselves for rapture. And I'm not against books. I know that there are books that have been written. There are encounters. Am I boring you? This is a foundation. Because several of us are living in fear. You don't even know what to believe. You are afraid. You are sitting, you are standing and you are wondering. And they tell you if God comes and just when you are, you know, maybe shouting at somebody, that's the end of it. If he comes to meet you shouting. You see that? And so we walk in all kinds of fear. Even when we go before God. There is no confidence in approaching him. I believe in repentance. You know me. I always balance things. It's foolishness that makes people to just swing the other side and don't coordinate it. There are spiritual coordinates that guide our dispensing of the truth. When you swing things in either side and they are not regulated by the word, it will still lead to error. I believe in repentance. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There were two men hanging on the cross. Two of them were thieves, true or false. A thief is somebody who stole something and they caught him. Those ones now. Is that true? They were hanging on the cross. And one was quarreling Jesus. Look, Jesus, we are this and nice of you to help us kill these people and let's escape and go and you see, there was no repentance in his heart. The other person turned and said, Ah, this guy is undeserving. We deserve this thing. And Jesus looked at him and said, This day you will be with me in paradise. This day. Why? For believing me. For believing me. For believing my innocence. Whatever gave you that revelation must be sponsored by the Spirit of God. Because no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit. To say Jesus is Lord does not mean J-E-S-U-S-I-S-L-O-R-D. No, that's not it. The Lordship of Jesus is declared by revelation. Our announcing it is simply a product of, it's not the reason. No. That's why the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, while they yet, Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell on them. There are so many things in my spirit. We have to free ourselves. The average Christian that we see walking around does not exactly know what he should do for God. Even what we, when we talk about purpose, most people think purpose is just for graduates. You are a graduate, your purpose is whatever you studied, do something with it, get married, train your children and give some money to the church and God will help you. That is a fruitless life. It truly is a fruitless life. 
the dominion mandate has been corrupted by an exaggerated fear of hellfire fear of heaven fear of rapture and there are books that keep coming every time you go online and just google it some of you oh i had a dream in that dream i saw rapture it may not be a lie the impact of revelations can cause you to be biased if the holy spirit does not balance you you can be caught up in an event and see the rapture happen and the catastrophe that happened and if god does not give you balance you can return back to earth and start harassing everybody brother be prepared i'm late for work i'm telling you that jesus is coming and you know and all and you make people feel guilty and pastors sometimes we are gullible because there are members that bully us i want to come and teach a series i had a seven days revelation about rapture i need to come and teach people and they come and stand and at the end of that teaching you wonder whether god is really love there are those who have seen every pastor in hell listen to my message revelation uh, what was it called reality of heaven and hell there are people who have seen satan found out that this is a very useful tool so those who started having these experiences satan can appear as an angel of light are we learning he now began to open people through experiences it is true that they left earth it is true that they were somewhere it is true that they saw tears similitudes and they returned back to destroy people let me tell you something this issue of rapture and heaven and hell has caused more fear and uncertainty to the extent that pastors who love God and have served in the vineyard for years cannot stand today. If I say it right now, if you know you are going to heaven, don't stand up. But if I say stand up, some of you will just stand up so that you are not embarrassed. So that if somebody will say, we are praying together, you mean you don't even know where you are going. You are not my friend again. But the truth is many people don't know for many people this is our theology let's just keep watching the day the trumpet sounds if i make it glory to be to, be to jesus no so we preoccupy our minds and never do anything are we together we never do anything it has made many fathers irresponsible in the name of being evangelists or missionaries Ah, I need there's an urgency in my spirit I need to preach the gospel Jesus can come you know any day any time honey there is no food that's not the issue let's just pay the price God knows when he comes he will reward us and the wife is saying what are you saying there's no food in the house nothing is happening and at the end of it the man will run and leave them and call the woman a witch call the children he gave birth to the five children witches leave the children to roam around like prostitutes and say i'm going to the mission field and then an unbeliever will meet them and train them and convert them you see what is happening all around islam is the fastest growing religion in europe there has never been any stadium like crusade with any evangelism but you are using an aberration of the dominion mandate occupy structures systems everywhere until i come listen brothers and sisters if we do not get this straight we are going to live very useless lives the most heat of this tragedy is the north northern christians are the most dominion mandate non-compliant you know why because the christianity we received in the north was purely evangelical are we together and which was correct but i'm saying that the imbalance there is that because of the urgency of things like persecution and so on and so forth people now were indoctrinated into not being serious with things like their lives their families it's in the north you can see one man with five six children staying in a small room and he tells you look what is the use of building a house I saw a vision and I know that when Jesus comes, call me Banzane. You hear them say it. And they, they threaten your visionary attitude. Oh, I want to build a house. I want to do this. All those things are useless. 
when the nada moto when the by the moto in yes you also call me banzane and then we say those things they look very nice they look appealing and they are responsible for the pain that many families the pain that many churches the pain and the decadence that happens in the society nobody takes responsibility over anything because we are saying after all jesus is coming the concept of jesus is coming is not a concept that should stimulate indiscipline and unseriousness jesus is coming should ginger us to occupy that he comes to meet us as a uh, as a faithful servant this mistake was adumbrated in matthew 25 he gave unto one five talents. He gave unto one two. He gave unto the other one. The man with one talent is doing what we are doing. I know he's coming soon. There's no need wasting my time. When will I go and do business with this money? And he buried it. When Jesus came, he was prepared, waiting for his arrival. Whereas the rest were there trying to bring interest for the master. Are we together now? And then when he came, he now said, you, you are a hard man. You have been threatening me. I can't wait to give you this, your coin. Carry this, your nonsense and leave. What did Jesus call him? Wicked one, two, unprofitable servant. And those who spend their time multiplying it, listen to what he told them. He said, well done, good and faithful servant. One of the synoptics says, I appoint to you kingdoms. That's the reward. Are we together? Jesus is coming soon. Should never threaten the dominion mandate. The consciousness of rapture should never threaten the dominion mandate. The consciousness of hell should never threaten the dominion mandate. The dominion mandate is not an antichrist mandate. Hey, look at me, church. The dominion mandate is not a mandate for ambitious people. Most people preach that the, the dominion mandate is for Pentecostals. So whenever we're talking about advancing um, the kingdom, they look at great people like our fathers, Bishop Oedeko and the rest, and say these people are just carnal. All they are thinking about is university. Jesus is coming soon. All they are thinking about is empowering people, prosperity all this money money thing and you see bloggers writing in ignorance we made that mistake and now we are about losing almost all our missionary secondary schools because the missionaries that came and other orthodox ministries like catholic equa you know and all of that they built schools is that true they built hospitals that, that was a, a mindset of the dominion mandate Adv they permeated lands because of the medical aid they could bring to people so although they did not like their gospel they still gave them land and gave them space today we are losing this and there are no good schools again you cannot trust a school where your child will be trained properly the mission schools no longer have money and support you know why because those to support them said no we are closer to rapture there is no need supporting you let us just wait jesus is coming many of us here are already having that mindset it must change tonight being rapture compliant is not running away from responsibility and sitting down to say oh let me make sure i don't talk no he comes to meet you like that he calls you an unprofitable servant are we blessed we are going to pray i wish i had time we will continue next week the gift of righteousness righteousness like kenyon would say um would define he calls it the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of inferiority and condemnation as i've learned about righteousness i found out is deeper than that revelation is progressive you know that kenyon died long ago are we together if kenyon were still alive he would have upgraded a lot of things righteousness is not just the ability to stand before the father righteousness is the very nature of god god's nature are we together not just doing right god's nature his rightness before the father is what was imparted upon us listen there is nobody who is qualified to execute the dominion mandate if you do not carry the righteousness of god the bible calls us now the righteousness of god that's why he calls it a gift everybody say it is a gift say it again it's a gift now every gift god gives you you use those gifts to produce fruits 
read the bible gifts go with fruits gifts fruits gifts fruits the gift of the spirit the fruit of the spirit the gift of the spirit is god's benevolence to you the fruit of the spirit is a product of your own alignment it is your own participation in the equation there is the gift of righteousness there is the fruit of righteousness the outworkings of righteousness hallelujah listen the first thing any believer needs is to possess the gift of righteousness it is only the gift of righteousness that authorizes the holy spirit to come upon you listen you cannot have the holy spirit without the gift of righteousness it's impossible there are progressions the first thing that must happen to a man to be able to reign in life is to be born of a woman you have to be born of a woman that's what authorizes you to wear a body the second thing that must happen to you is rebirth regeneration from the word regime please make sure you're writing this down the first thing that must happen to you is your natural birth everyone born of a woman comes with the nature of the first adam the fallen nature the nature of the first adam is the nature that is corrupted is the nature that is called sin sin is not just something you do sin is a nature that comes to every man he said in sin did my mother conceive me the true concept of sin is not the things that are done the true concept of sin is a nature that is inherent in you that compels you to be a slave to it and then execute a lot of things so the first thing that must happen to any man is birth the second is rebirth 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 what is rebirth an impartation of the nature and the image of christ in that man hallelujah these are realities of redemption that we must know in order to execute the dominion mandate the bible says this let me tell you what the bible says we're rounding up give give me please give me first peter chapter 1 verse 23 i think 22 23 first peter chapter 1 22 23 um, i'm looking for one I'm, I'm sure it's one of those verses first peter being born again being born again everybody listen this born again thing is a big deal being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abided forever being born again or being saved as we call it it's not just some oh god oh god i give you my heart i give you my heart i am your child i am your child amen amen and they say congratulations you are now a child of god take a little hamper a little tape in it and a little biscuit and you are no 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 that, that's not it at all being born again is a supernatural event listen that's why you must make sure everyone around you has that experience it is the condition to fulfill the dominion mandate the Bible says that only those who have received the gift of righteousness and then the abundance of grace shall by that one man, that mediator of the new covenant, Jesus himself. The foundation of our work in the kingdom, the foundation of the restructuring for the dominion mandate starts with Jesus. The pattern man, the portrait, Jesus himself. The Bible says looking up to him, he is the epicenter of this dominion mandate he is the epicenter of the entire life of the believer whenever we talk kingdom whenever we talk of anything the epicenter of what we call the faith life now is jesus you begin to trace your compass from him whenever you draw any bearing outside of the christ that whatever it is that you are constructing is already in error christ is the standard we start with him and we begin to navigate our path through this kingdom life it starts in christ that's why the bible says the first qualification is a regeneration comes from the word regene because every man born of a woman is carrying a spiritual gene of the first adam the fallen nature you do not have to commit any physical sin anyone who is not a possessor of righteousness cannot be in heaven 
cannot be in heaven the only not exception to this that i've seen from bible are babies why because their wills have not been developed for them to make a choice that's why there are no babies in hell whoever has a vision with babies in hell did not go to hell he went somewhere else are we together now yes the gift of righteousness do you have that gift it's a gift it's a gift pastor i give you a gift as with any gift it must be received that is a gift you receive it you can receive it this is the foundation i give it to you you receive it i give you can reject it that's why the bible says as many as received him gave he them the power to become to become to become the power to become so when you receive him the power to become is given to you they that are possessors so when you have received christ by faith truly in your heart you can dare to say together with all the saints that i am part of the brethren i have a right to call abba father i have a right to call abba father he is not just your father he is not just the god of joshua selman that's a different dimension he is now our father that's why paul can say about the family in heaven and on earth we are now one big family under the same lord under the same faith under the same baptism paul was teaching there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism we have been immersed into the same experience the foundation please hear me is not impartation impartation cannot give you the gift of righteousness healing cannot give you the gift of righteousness teaching all the principles that i teach you on success and all of that as important as they are they cannot give you the gift of righteousness the gift of righteousness is freely given the custodian the authorized entity that can guarantee its release to you is jesus the christ his office is exclusively responsible for handling eternal life handling the gift of righteousness the holy spirit is only an enforcer he comes with respect in honor to your believing jesus you don't believe the holy spirit and receive the gift of righteousness no you don't believe the father and receive the gift of righteousness the same way it is not the vc signature that is on your admission letter it is the registrar but it's not the highest authority it is his office is that true so the office of the christ is responsible for allocating this when you stand and believe his report that message the reward for believing it is that the christ authorizes the spirit of god to come to you so when you come out for an altar call you don't know how supernatural what it is you are doing you don't feel anything physically you stand and heaven is watching the sun is watching lord jesus i believe in this i believe in that and while you are saying it jesus vets the sincerity of your confession and on grounds of that truth the spirit of god comes into your life representing eternal life and in that instant whether you feel clean or not the bible tells us like joshua the high priest in zechariah that that gift of righteousness is given to you the gift of righteousness is your past is your qualification it opens you up to the potentials of manifesting this dominion mandate the other dimension we'll look at is in subsequent series the abundance of grace abundance on grace another word is grace upon grace because there is saving grace that is a seed given to you as god's benevolence but it does not stop there that grace is nurtured through knowledge and understanding grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace becomes abundant as you access knowledge so in other words there are two things that you must possess the gift of righteousness and access to knowledge access to knowledge that grants you the privilege to be able to reign 
God is counting on us to fulfill this mandate. God is counting on us when that rebirth happens to us as believers. What then is the next step? The next step after rebirth is discipleship. Write the word down. We have abused that word. Discipleship. Discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign. Discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign. Discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's code of operation. Discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's belief system. Discipleship is the system where believers are trained to reign. What is happening right now in Koinonia is discipleship. The word has become so ugly, most people don't even want to hear it. Because for many people, discipleship means under some kind of stringent religious system, submitting under all sorts of things. No. We need discipleship. It is God's system where ordinary believers are now trained on the matters of the kingdom trained to understand the precepts of, of the kingdom and this is why god gave apostles this is why god gave prophets listen this is why god gave evangelists are you seeing where we now come into the equation we were never there from beginning the apostolic ministry the prophetic ministry as we know it now is not an eternal ministry they are not eternal no jesus is not in heaven today just as our apostle no when he sat upon that throne we still call him the apostle of our faith but his ministry now number one is lord number two is an as an intercessor the bible says he makes intercession for the saints even if i prophesy the bible says it will end is that true even prophecies will end even tongues will end so a day will come when god will look at us and say pastor alpha come well done good and faithful servant i put you over destiny makers international and you walked with them you did a great job i see the devils that you casted i see the sick bodies you have done well well done enter into the rest there is a new assignment that is going to be given to you a day will come god will look at me and say apostle oh joshua selma he will call me apostle <laughs> whatever he calls me he's right <laughs> hallelujah and then he will congratulate me and say well done for the labor they laughed at you but you continued you served and when they are doing it some of you who laughed at me will be watching that will be such a gallant ceremony this is what will happen in heaven and while that handshake is going on well done good and faithful servant we are smiling in glory and rejoicing we have conquered life we occupied well till he came and he says because of the tv station you people set up we have here in the record in heaven over one billion souls came because of this television ministry ah. surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will i dance for you jesus you know that song i can only imagine some of you let me tell you what will happen in heaven you will stand you are happy you got there but you will be ashamed i hope you know there's shame in heaven oh yes go and read your bible there is you stand no souls no partnership no blessing you gossiped and said everything the gift of righteousness brought you to heaven well done and there are, you will see men who were slaughtered like animals men who they did all kinds of things you will see them there age 33 standing there happy because 33 is the standard right and you will see them stand and the Matthias crown will be put on them all kinds of people and you will stand there no crown no applause because you just said jesus is coming the the old hymn we used to sing only remembered for what we have done remember that hymn yes we must train believers to reign we don't train believers to become our church members pastors 
you don't train believers so that i can get church members this member consciousness is destroying god's dominion mandate god's idea is not to have a pile of weak people looking at a superhuman human being called apostle joshua selman and every sunday the man of god is here god's idea is that he uses men called gifts to prepare the believers to reign are we together the next dimension after reigning is called governance god begins to apportion dimensions apportions mountains spheres of influence that represents his desire and the people you have now trained and are still training are now allowed to begin to occupy these dimensions this is god's idea being a church member for 10 years and not doing anything for god no soul winning no building institutions that advance the agenda of god is a total waste of time that may be religion that may be christianity in court but that's not kingdom hallelujah we are going to pray our time is up i gave this illustration to help you understand that when he said have dominion the idea is not outshining people the idea is understanding that the gift of righteousness alongside the abundance of grace that is supplied on the strength of knowledge access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the systems of god empower you to now begin to occupy occupy does not mean build a house for yourself occupy does not mean buy a jeep listen carefully occupy does not mean um um carry all kinds of gucci designers louis vuitton and all of those things are only the fringe benefits are we together they are to be able to create an ample condition for you to be effective so you don't rejoice and say look i am enjoying why look at my house look at five cars look at ten shoes look at trips abroad and you put them like crowns whoever talks like that does not know god and does not understand the dominion mandate so my pride and your pride is not in our cars have the cars but that's not the pride the pride is not that you are now wearing a hair of two hundred and fifty thousand. that is useless if it did not help you advance the kingdom your pride is that god gave me money and i worked the systems of the kingdom because i understood i would be a kingdom financier and i used that money i sponsored a tv station that now created a platform for people to receive jesus for people to rise for people to be built i built a university that was able to empower people they were agents of national transformation at the same time addicts for god i was able to raise a school of ministry that mentored and guided people and they became firebrand apostles and pastors this is kingdom check what you celebrate there are things that are worth celebrating pat you at the back but that is not it doesn't make any sense in the spirit i have 10 estates nonsense truly speaking i have 30 shoes nonsense if i don't balance this many of us are on the way to destruction because this is what we call christianity we come and jump around and say my faith is working why i have 30 suits look at my picture with the owner of so 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 and so oil company and you gather them around and live your entire life while you are old you just say you know i lived a successful life that's a wasted life a life of purpose and a life of meaning is a life that contributes to fulfilling the dominion mandate what is it take charge what is it expose creation to who i am and what i am and i've taught you that the dominion mandate is twofold one establishing christ in the hearts of men you must establish christ in the hearts of men that's why soul winning is non-negotiable please hear me if you are a christian and you are not winning souls god is not happy with your efficiency there is something wrong winning souls is not for preachers winning souls is your contribution to giving more space for people to know him love him and to extend his influence the bible says in the multitude of men 
is a king's honor the more and more we find people who love jesus and surrender their hearts to him and the more we can permeate our environment with the ideology we'll talk about that next week of the kingdom we are fulfilling the dominion mandate now that you are born again apostle i don't know what to do return back to the dominion mandate now that you have received the the gift of righteousness contend for the abundance of grace how does it come grace and peace comes through knowledge multiplication through knowledge access it takes a long time the bible says you don't just reign with grace that grace must be lavish it must be in abundance that means you must be a bank of knowledge you must be a bank of understanding you must be a compendium of kingdom mysteries and on the strength of those mysteries you reign rise up on your feet We are going to pray three prayer points very quickly tonight. Prayer point number one. Lord, restore me. Listen. Lord, I don't like the way my life has been. I've been living my life. All I think about is food to eat, wife to marry, husband to marry, children to have. Let me just complete my education. And some of you are obsessed about marriage, obsessed about children, as if these things in themselves, obsessed about cars. Oh Lord, you have to give me a Jeep before August. And God is saying, come on, come on, come on. I'm bigger than that. You can't be on earth just for Jeeps. There is a higher and a nobler call. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, re realign my life to the dominion mandate. Realign my life. Lift your voice and pray inside and outside your gifts are only useful when they are aligned to the dominion mandate and he gave them dominion and he gave them dominion and he gave them dominion dominion over principalities and powers dominion over systems and structures Dominion to legislate. Dominion to administrate. Hallelujah. I'll be teaching you this next week, but we can still pray. Lord, this dominion mandate is complex. Where is my own part? Show me. Lift your voice and cry. Where is my own part? We all have roles to play. That's what we call our assignments. That's what we call purpose. Are you praying? Lord, I'm tired of living a useless life. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Show me. Show me. Show me. Reveal to me the blueprint. Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. The last prayer point for tonight lord prioritize my life take away distractions keep me focused on the things that really matter the things that have eternal value lift your voice and pray take away distractions take away distractions let me not major on the minors let me not major on the minors Take away distraction from my church. Take away distraction from my fellowship. Take away distraction. I want my life to be focused. 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 As I seek prosperity, as I seek cars, as I seek houses, as I seek influence, Lord, redirect my focus that these things do not distract me. That I will know they are only a means to an end. The end is fulfilling the dominion mandate. That the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth like the waters the sea.
Hallelujah. Let's add one more prayer point. I know our time is gone. I want you to pray and say, Lord, anything that has distracted me and has taken the place of this assignment, I pray that you restore, restore. Some of you, you are the way you look for money, the way you, you exaggerated it, and God is out of money, money, money all the way. Money, cars, houses, children, marriage, whatever, job, job. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, cut away, cut away attachments, ungodly attachments, attachment to things, attachment to motives. Attachment to things, attachment to motives. Hallelujah. I'm making an altar call now. I told you that the first key the Bible recommends for reigning is the gift of righteousness. Without Jesus, you are not born again. Even if you have a Christian name, there are people here, truthfully speaking, I want you to be honest with yourself tonight inside outside any of the overflows and those online as you are hearing me the spirit of god is ministering to you and saying you truly need to make your way right you don't inherit salvation and there are those who are saying i need to rededicate my life i was never taught this way i just thought that everything is just to live fear fear go to church on sunday wherever you are our time is gone i'm going to count one to four Please clear the way for them. I want you to come out. It will be my joy to lead you to Jesus Christ. Somebody needs to come out. Celebrate them. They are coming. Please clear the way for them. Outside, are you coming? Run, run and join them. Keep coming. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Keep coming too. If they are coming from outside, clear the way for them. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. Lord is redirecting people's focuses many of you will go back and begin to have dreams and God will say you are not supposed to be here you are wasting your time be here this is the place of your call the place of grace the place of relevance those who are standing I want you to lift your right hand I salute your courage every one of you I want you to mean business don't stand here just to recite a poem say it sincerely you are about to receive the gift of righteousness say Lord Jesus I believe in you I have come before you and before your people to receive the life of God to receive the gift of righteousness so that I will reign right now I believe you are the son of God I believe you died for me I believe you rose from the dead I receive your life I declare that I'm a possessor of eternal life I receive the gift of righteousness and I declare that I begin to reign over sicknesses over limitations over Satan and all the powers of the enemy from today I declare that I'm a child of God and I continue to grow and I continue to flourish in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted Jesus thank you thank you because they are possessors of the gift of righteousness therefore I stand before God's people and I declare tonight that the gift of righteousness is given to you I declare that your sins are forgiven I declare that you will never be the same 
in the name of Jesus the power of sin the power of Satan the power of the flesh is broken over your life forever we supply grace for you in the name of Jesus and I declare that you will begin to go from glory to glory